Hi, I'm Nick, and welcome to Grant Morrison's Invisibles, Volume 3. If you've made it this far, and hopefully watched all the other parts, I'd like to personally thank you for taking a chance with me with this series. It's so packed with cool ideas, even if maybe they don't all fit together perfectly. I just hope you found something worth thinking about, found a character you cared about, or at least enjoyed the ride. The Invisibles changed my life at one point, and it's always been one of my very favorite stories, something I've always wanted to share with the world. I hope you go on to look deeper into DC's Vertigo catalog, as it's filled with great books like this one. I know I'll be back here before too long. Now then, on to business. It's 1999, the new Aeon nears, and the Outer Church plans to coronate the Moonchild monster from the Mirror World as the new king and have an Archon descend into it to rule the future. Division X is hot on their trail, however, and the Invisibles will come back together after a year apart to try and thwart their plans. We'll find out more about Sir Miles when he's kidnapped by Mr. Six's cell and paid back for his time with King Mob in Room 101. Then Edith must say goodbye to life in Carmageddon after first touring Desaad's new erotic paradise, and King Mob must then process his feelings about that. Then it's time for the big finale, Jack vs. the King Archon at the turn of the millennium, and everyone's coming to the party at Westminster Abbey. The final issue is set in 2012, right before and including the apocalypse, and it's quite a show, one you'll see when we get there. I'd like to warn you now there will be some lengthy text explanations toward the end, for clarity's sake. Pause and read them if you feel you need any clarification. Sometimes the art just isn't up to the task of expressing what Graham wanted, so I included the script for a few pages, straight from Anarchy for the Masses. Let's begin. January 28, 1999. London, England. This is what we know. He holds a consulting director position at MI6, and his security clearance is several levels higher than all the leaders of the free world put together. This pass is the original James Bond. He's an initiated Freemason to at least the 33rd degree. He's been around the world a dozen times. He votes conservative every four years, just for a laugh. He visits a three grand session specialist once a month for executive stress relief. She gets her own television show out of it. Sad, isn't it? Are we just jealous? So, Miles Delacorte, this is your life. Christ. Amazing binoculars, Gov. We never had anything like this back in the old days. You can even see that little bitty Miss Shaving. Think they'd thrash that out of a bit, Eton. What's he thinking, eh? What's going on in there? Come, Armageddon, come. Satan Storm 1. Common people. This is the aftermath of the death of Princess Diana. Before an investigation revealed her driver was solely to blame, it was widely believed that her limo crashed due to being chased by paparazzi, and Grant worked that into the story as it went along. She had already been involved in the story as a public figure as early as 1995. While surveilling Sir Miles, Jack Flint and George Harper of Division X spot the Moonchild being loaded into a van and give chase. They've caught a few henchmen, but the prize has gotten away. We last saw Division X at the end of Volume 1. They were tracking the mirror the Moonchild comes from, from the hands of Mr. Quimper to Sir Miles Delacorte, following a lead that began at the House of Fun. North Africa, the Academy. In preliminary training, you may have heard and been told a number of contradictory stories about the nature and origin of the universe and about the reasons why the Invisible Order is coming to being. It'll be freezing back home. Alright, go for it. Ha! <sighs> We lied. We are not at war. There is no enemy. This is a rescue operation. Ponce? It was Paris 68. You were never the same after that. Who are you this time? Those are the very same clothes you wore when we were students here. It's one of my favorite personalities, El Pad, my friend. Mr. Six, the last of the famous international playboys. Something big is happening in England. They're going to love you in Tangier. Some boys everywhere will call you Messiah. I'll have to find another savior. I'm not going via Tangier. Thought I'd take the shortcut. I used to be the boy's teacher, Jack Frost. His name was Dane then. It's another life. We were all younger. And now he's all mine. It's Christmas all year round. Ooh la. <sighs> Mr. Six smells great. And so to work. Mr. Six takes a shortcut through Universe A, much like King Mob uses Universe B for. It's unknown why Mob chooses to see the darker side, since we know he can easily travel to A as well. Perhaps it keeps him grounded. Ladakh, Northern India. There. Every time I hear stuff like this, it makes me think of this God's theory I heard once. The future's firing bits of itself into the past. 
More things from the future impact with the present all the time. Soon you will be able to tell them apart. He had a certificate to prove he was mad. Where's the thing I'm supposed to be looking at? Right there. It's moving between Sirius and Procyon, see? We put in a sniffer program and hacked the sky satellite network. Soon we'll be able to broadcast our own propaganda. Eventually we'll be able to digitally alter existing shows and really fuck with people's heads. Invisible TV. They asked me if you'd help. Me? Come back as Joseph Goebbels for the Aquarian Reich? Finally getting a bit of reputation for it? It's 702. You can tell by the position of the moon over the horizon. Fucked my ears when I was young. Rhythm guitar. Feedback. Out here I can listen to insects shagging. I can hear the grass grow. I can sit up on that mountain all day if I want. I vowed I won't be satisfied till I can hear radio with the naked ear. Any luck so far? We live in hope. What kind of propaganda are we talking about, Shanji? Mr. Six has George Harper over and they review the latest evidence. Green language. Bird language. Under the invisible star that can't be seen, only felt. I'm not explaining myself properly, but it's only because you haven't seen them in their suits. Coming and going. This is the girl who told us she had sex with aliens. That's hours of the stuff, sir. The governor says it's fractals. The more we investigate, the deeper in we get, the more there is. This is a conspiracy to end them all. And the same name keeps cropping up again and again. So, Miles, it's horrible. They killed Diana. She was to make the moon child in her room, but she didn't want to do it. Miles said. So they brought the old moon child out of the mirror. They're watching everybody. That's what Mystic Meg says. Six balls to win. Destiny drives a black Mercedes. Six balls and the bonus to win. Bang! Sorry, I taped over Diana's funeral. You've always had taste, George, I'll give you that. I must say, this is riveting viewing. You've earned your Blue Peter badge yet again. Here, this is a good bit. From 1960, BBC Archive LSD experiment. It was banned. They overdosed him by mistake. Oh, that was the story. Anyhow, it all went a bit too weird for Mrs. Grundy. Identify this young existentialist hero. Is he all right? You see, man will not be man. He will be like them. Star-headed. In the 2012. The trans continuum. That is how they are putting it. Like them. Their language. Miles Delacourt. Like the old ones. Like them. So, he's a Tory Satanist, with a few Lovecraft paperbacks on his shelves, and his own pet monster. A royal throwback, Miles intends to sit on the throne of England as the grotesque king of some new dark age? This is a conspiracy theory via Hello Magazine. George has a psychic vision of wicker men set aflame. George? Temporal lobe epilepsy. Uh, I used to hate it when I was a kid. Two days before my old man burned to death, saw him shagging Joan of Arc on the kitchen table, clear as day. George, did you see something? What is it, George? The governor's in trouble. Ah, shit. I'll get a cloth for that. Jack Flint is drinking in a pub called the Wicker Man when the barman slips something in his drink and he has a heart attack. He's rushed away in an ambulance, but the people inside tell him, Death is where it starts, Jack. Well, well, well. Revenge is sweet. Apparently, if an ice cube were to be heated to 10 to the 320th power Kelvin, gravity would unify with the other fundamental forces, and a 10-dimensional superstring would appear in our universe. We all living in a hologram, Helga. Intense sunspot activity of this type occurs every 11 years. It's a phenomenon which tends to coincide with periods of massive social upheaval and youth unrest. This is the way the world ends. I got I brought champagne. Consider these recent dates of solar activity. 1955, 1966, 1977, 1988, 1999. It is coming. It's coming round again. Beryl Alice Wyndham, May 1896 through January 1965. Queen Mab. This is thine high reward. The past shall rise. Thou shalt behold the present. I will teach the secrets of the future. So the old queen shags some monster from another dimension, and this ugly bleed is the result. Some mothers do have them, eh? Satan Storm 2, Cold Britannia. 200 years ago, so the story goes. We've seen some strange things in our time, George. The royals have always been among the strangest. More signs and portents? How about this, sir? 
An 11 year sunspot cycle reaches its peak this year, and Neptune enters Aquarius, which means social upheaval and massive unforeseen technological change, according to Mystic Meg. They claim they had Diana killed at Point de Lama, Bridge of the Soul, that is, popular sacrificial site for the heathens, apparently. She backed out of breeding the King of Shadows for him, so they brung up this charmer out of the palace cellar. Oh, and on August 11th, which is Lama's Eve, there'll be a total eclipse, a black sun. That's when his highness here is going to be crowned, in Westminster Abbey, no less. The governor worked all that out before the bastards got to him. You sure this is where he was last night? The governor knows every shithole from here to land's end, he's got a grass in every one of them. <sighs> I should have come with him. Don't blame yourself, George. Search for psychometric traces out here, and I'll have a quiet one with the locals. Morning, gentlemen. Any of you ladies see what happened to Jack Flint last night? <laughs> Police. Stay perfectly still while I read your minds. The bomb owner's paid to put something in his drink. Ambulance men took him away. Nobody knows anything else, except that we should be talking to a man named Purbs. Yeah, that was the name, the bloke he had to meet. Here, found this off his suit. Governor's been wearing that jacket since Jaws come out. He gets the best vibrations off the old stuff. Some sort of a ritual, an initiation ceremony. Pagan? Sacrificial? How does it connect? Is he alive, George? So what comes after the sacrifice? Start up the motor, sir. Reckon this button lead us straight to it. Ladakh, Northern India. Back to Noel's house party, Tony Blair, the Millennium Dome, and bloody EastEnders. No wonder you're praying. I'm off to Pompeii on Friday. Poor you. Or think of me kindly when you're snorkeling through the sunken ruins of Nan Madol in your bikini like a Bond girl. Nice bomb. He'll come up with some ideas for us. We'll be doing the first trials in summer. I'll write you nice and office on the butt, Shanjeet. <sighs> first time I came to Lada, I vowed I would never, ever take the state bus to Manali again. Christ. Bus leaves at four. Temperature in London is five degrees centigrade. Shit. Dear Shanjeet, my arse feels pulverized, but I'm in stone in the back seat watching the mountains go by. There are no crash barriers. The view from the window is like looking out of a plane. 3,000 down in some impossible valley, I can see the burned-out shells of state buses. Sensory overload. Eyes burnt out by scenes of ceaseless revelation, etc. You know the story. The book I mentioned is Test Card F. I stopped watching TV after I read this. Then I just started watching the ads. The most powerful and sophisticated hypnotic methods are being used right now to create the illusion we mistake for reality. The point is, of course, that these same effective weapons are at our disposal. Now, well-established techniques for fighting illusion. We have to steal back a hallucination, as a rich friend of mine once said. That's the first thing we have to do, anyway. Right. Take our friend, Sir Miles Delacourt, for instance. Every year on January 28th, he puts flowers on this woman's grave. Splash. Now let's watch the ripples. Beryl Wyndham, turns out after a bit of digging, was a bit of a girl in the Roaring Twenties. She was ruined when allegations about her past revealed links to several terrorist bombings before the war. Story was she'd fallen in with a particularly nasty group of villains, the Invisible International. Where have we heard that name before? Now either Beryl and her mates were just a gang of upper crust kids farting about with cocaine, jazz, and dynamite, or Beryl, you're scandalous. The Invisible International, Invisibilism, the Invisible College, the Invisible Army, the anti-terrorism squad of the file and slot going back to, and how about this, the 1500s. Let's hope they bring those 16th century devils to justice then, eh, George? Miles Delacourt, what's the link? The allegations that led to Beryl Wyndham's death first appeared in a book written in 1960. In 1957, Miles and Beryl were members of the Ordo Templi Orientis back in London. Crowley-style ritual magic, mostly, with links to Lovecraft cults. Anyway, plain old Miles he was then, before his inheritance, did a lot of weird stuff before he joined the establishment. Rumor has it he was one of the Satanists during the used to run the Tory party when Thatcher was in. Remember Brother Raoul? And there's a story the homeless down King's Cross had been telling, about a bunch of tops in fox hunting gear preying upon the down and outs. They call the leader of the hunt Master Miles. So he's a millionaire psychopath, or a ritual magician with considerable power and ambition who has links to several ancient conspiracies. Strictly the dark side of the force by the look of it, sir. As for that little book from 1960 and the scandal that ruined Beryl Wyndham, have a guess what its title was? The Invisibles. And it was written by Miles Delacourt. They brought him all the way out here? My God, have they killed him? 
I don't know, with this button going off in my hand like a joy buzzer, going in the right direction. Governor said we'd opened the world's biggest can of worms. There's political corruption, there's mind control, there's assassination and UFOs, and somewhere behind all this there seem to be space monsters pulling the strings. Not space monsters, George. Time monsters. Here. It's right over here. It's his body. It's not jumped any conclusions before we... Shit. That's his, all right. You can still hear the jaws, the Martha, when you touch the lapel. Hang on. Looks like they left everything here. His wallet, credit cards, a lot. Who are they, George? Something missing. Yeah, that's the point, isn't it? It's all about what's not there. Space is in between. The stuff you can't see even when it's right in front of your nose. The Invisible. North Africa, The Academy. I've had fucking aliens and flying saucers. I've been to hell with the devil, and I've been one with the fucking universe. Still can't get a fucking bag of chips around here. What do you want me to say? Came here with Roger out there to learn kung fu. Seen God's face, and it just looks like a prick from Liverpool with delusions of grandeur. I've seen it and done it, man. And what have you learned? The world gets more like Disneyland every day. It's the same the other way around. Can't explain what I know. Try explaining red to a dog and see how fast he gets bored. You're supposed to be the fucking ascended master. Me? I'm not interested in your obvious psychic talents or all your crazy hallucinations. Anyone will tell you, El Payet is a practical man, and I brought you here tonight to help you with an engineering problem. What do you think of this? How could a bloody great thing like this fly in here? Fuck this, eh? They built it down here. They must have. There's a riddle. How do you get the goose out of the bottle without breaking the bottle or killing the goose? This is fucking shite. What fucking goose? It's all fucking shite. Let's have it straight. Let me get back for a kip, eh? Ha! <laughs> Some students spend years pondering that one. There's no goose, Jack. No bottle. Only words. See? The goose is free. Ah. <sighs> Starting to wake up now? <sighs> Bastard. <sighs> Truly, you are one of the ascended ones. 15,000 feet to be exact. Fuck. No. Fuck. I have a choice for you. I can tell you right now how to achieve final enlightenment as a Roshanaya. Or instead, I can tell you how to fly a jet plane. Sir Miles was shown a photograph of Barbala hidden on the dark side of the moon and found by passing American deep space probes. The Americans are planning on sending someone up to retrieve it. New Delhi, India. Do you have any rooms available for the next couple of nights? Two nights. The big bath. Please. Anyway, I'll tell you about the sitcom idea next time. A lot of frack over images of centipede shagging and South American torture victims. Atrocity footage sort of thing. Like friends, but with more of a story. I'll be back in touch as soon as I avert the coming of the Forgotten Ones from the Kingdom of Eternal Despair. Have fun in Pompeii doing the same. Yours, King Mark. Somerset, England. Glastonbury Tour. Bit 70s, eh? All that John Mitchell lay hunting Tolkien stuff. When I was 19, I came up here with a big pack on my back. I was going around the sacred sites for a couple of weeks, kitted out like Sir Edmund Hillary doing K2. Felt light as air when I took it off at the top. It's all finally coming to pass, and in our time. Miles intends to crown his monster during the eclipse in August. Italian suit? It's the new me, the yuppie terrorist. One day all of this will be underwater. London will look like Venice. Mermaid shagging in St. Paul's. Whale shit clogging up the underground. You need to get out and start talking to people again. Have some Dutch courage. I knew you were there when the time machine did whatever it did. Rotated through the fourth dimension of the year 2012 and took my girlfriend with it. Kel Dimage. Your protege, Jack Frost, is currently undergoing transfiguration at our dear friend El Fayed's hands. Chin chin. Jack's all right. We should all be like him. We should all be like you, you mean? Heil Hitler. You know what I mean. Have we wrung a messiah from Liverpool's common clay, then? And is our messiah bigger than their messiah? A toast to the sunset of empire, the last of England. Happy birthday, by the way. Sorry about the girl. America was mad. I've never felt so high frequency. I've never killed so many people. Took months of setting up a mountain in Lodoc to decelerate and burn some karma. Happy birthday to me. Of course I don't expect you to plan this alone. We're gathering the knights of the round table, then. Sounds like my cup of tea. I knew I could count on you. I'll have to make a few phone calls. 
need people I can trust. I need them smart and I need them good looking. He's seeing you. Should I introduce you to Helga. Evening, Jack. Sorry, I should say Detective Inspector Flint. I suppose you're wondering where you are. Those two mates of yours gave you up in the end. Joan of Arc turned to gas and light. What do you reckon you'll turn into? A copper like you. Pork scratchings, probably. The world's starting to change out of all recognition, Jack. We all have to learn to change with it. We all got to learn to make sacrifices. London, England. This started out as a simple investigation into a haunted toilet, and now we're knee deep in royal scandal and five hundred year old conspiracies. Five thousand years barely seem to cover it, Mr. Crowley. And nobody's yet been able to come up with any credible explanation for that bloody ectoplasm that started all this. It imitates thought. It can be molded by directed thought. Some varieties appear to be malign, others benign. It seems unduly simplistic. But then so does the idea that two opposing forces are now in the closing stages of an ongoing war to decide the destiny of humanity. Whatever this is, people have been trying to find a way of describing it for a very long time indeed. Why not ectoplasm? Where you been getting all this from, Gov? I've been in correspondence via email some very unusual people, George. I think I have a good lead on Jack's whereabouts. Never mind that. I'd like to know who's responsible for this obscenity. Found sellotape to the gates of Buckingham Palace. Satan Storm 3. The It Girls. August 11th. That's the eclipse. Some people just like to shock, sir. That's all. Tell me nothing. DJs, probably. Anally fixated types flinging shit around like a chimp's tea party. This investigation turned into a chimpanzee tea party, Harper. Call this a report. Salvador Dali's diaries make more bloody sense than this. Am I honestly to believe that Sir Miles Delacorte, a friend of the Queen, intends to bring about the apocalypse? Finally, Detective Inspector Flint's a priority at present. You shouldn't have lost a senior officer in the first place. Will you stop playing with things, you? You're a hell of a bloody fidget, Harper. I don't think picking up the vibration, sir. This, for instance, is regularly used by your old secretary, Anne, as not only a tool for masturbation, but also as a spoon for stirring your tea, sir. I'll give you vibrations. You want me to bring down the British establishment? You give me Detective Inspector Jack Flint. How the hell can you afford that Bentley you've got blocked in the disabled parking area, Six? Racy novels, Mr. Crowley. Grrr. Yeah, your bloody disgrace, the power of you. Find Jack Flint. England. Wakey, wakey, Jack. It's all gone. The credit cards, the wallet, the life. Didn't take much, did it, in the end? You found what you were looking for, Jack. It's what's left when everything you think you are is burned away. Bullocks! Nobody's really alive until they died, don't you think? Ugh! Shut it! Ugh! Ugh! No! What was your face before you were born? Try to remember. It's a classic postmodern trip, Dad. While you're on the bottle of Darmada, I'm shagging your wife. You can have them both. First one will eat the top half. Second one will have the rest of you. Who are you bastards? <coughs> that thing you were looking for, the thing you always overlooked, the invisible. What? That's the whole point, Jack. The thing you were looking for was right there all along. K-23, the drug affects the language processing centers in the brain. Whatever he reads becomes real with. You are in the wicker man. The invisibles. Makes initiation so much easier. North Africa. How the fuck do I get down out of here? I'm in a plane and I can't fucking fly it. What the fuck's this all about? Tell us it's a fucking illusion. Get us down out of here. You'll have to ask a wiser man than me about metaphysics. I don't deal in illusions. Well, get me some reality on toast, man. I'm fucking sick of being hypnotized. What's it all for? They tell me you're the Messiah, the Buddha, the Chosen One. You're here to save us all. And you can't even fly a jet aircraft. Were you going to save us with magic, O oh Illuminated One? Will magic stop the ground from breeding you at the speed of sound? They tell me you overcome devils and cure the afflicted, so walk away from the wreckage. Sure's your next trick, Master. Mental. Fucking mental you are. You are fucking mental, and I'm mental same as the fucking rest. Maybe knowing that won't save you either. Look, there's a scarab crawling happily across terra firma. Some people hate bugs. Consider the scarab. Is the beetle a monster rolling shit, or a god navigating the sun across the arch of day? What do you think? Messiah or ignorant frightened child? Good or evil? 
dead or alive. You should decide what you want to be very quickly. You're heading for a collision with the continent. England. Ugh. God help you in there, Jack. Feels like we're killing him. We are. Time for this. Careful. Poor Jack. Still, at least he doesn't have to scrub duck beesies from the walls. Sooner we have a whole team together to face us, the happier I'll be. You met King Maud then? I think he likes you. I know. I went home with him. He showed me an x-ray of his skull he'd had printed on a dish towel. One thing led to another. Christ Almighty. Hope you're right about this stuff, Six. Urgh. The alien metal language has an alphabet and some words, but no real grammar yet. Still, Chinese seems like a challenge when I was fifteen. Helga, you continue to astound me. Slept with King Mob just like that? How very modern. He read me extracts from a medical journal describing the process of a Staphylococcus aureus infection, and then he pleasured me with a potato. How extraordinary. It was wonderful. What sort of potato was it? Arshire Blue. North Africa. You're reaching altitude. Messiah or mere boy? As a matter of fucking fact, man, right now I'd rather be a fucking pilot, all right? Good answer. You'll find enlightenment in the glove compartment. The Russian pilots kept their Diamante evening gowns in there during the Cold War. I'll do my best to talk you through it. No fucking way. I have faith in your learning abilities. Concentrate as you have never done before. Now, can you see the altimeter? London, England. Tarkin, you don't seem quite convinced. They're not like people anymore, and the sooner you're blooded, the better. I know, but now that I see them so mild, it all seems a bit gruesome. The girl with black hair is lovely. Well, we have no other use for the social jetsam now that Mr. Quimper is gone. Frankly, I'm glad that's over. The films, the orgies, I was never comfortable with that aspect of it. Still, the old monster's going to Mrs. Rumpy Pumpy, though, eh? I don't think so. Soon it'll be one of them, the forgotten ones. And those that do not make like them will be tortured and exterminated in their billions. Learn to treat others as cattle, as vermin. Learn that lesson, Tarkin, and perhaps you will not be herded into the pens when their armies arrive. Find the forgotten within yourself. Be like them. Learn to be a monster, Tarkin, for make no mistake, the monsters are coming to inherit the earth, and everything will be overthrown. I say, it's all a bit Old Testament. Yes, that was one of them, too. One less big issue, Salesman. No, I believe he was a journalist. The creature's getting stronger. It's able to get out of the mirror on its own now. Diana's firstborn, the moon child we planned, would have been eighteen now and ready to be occupied. She hadn't taken fright. She hadn't seen Rosemary's baby on television. She'd had the wit to comprehend her destiny as mother of the new Aeon. Instead, we're forced to make do with this two-hundred-year-old abortion. Not quite as photogenic as our intended golden boy king, but perhaps an age of darkness demands a true king of terror. A king such as this, who cannot be gazed upon without revulsion. It's a vehicle, that's all. Mindless and ill-conceived in its day, little better now. But it's adapting and acclimatizing to the pressures here. On coronation day, the King Arkal will enter this misshapen body. And that will be that. Sir Miles, I've always been curious. The dreadful noises, the smell. Where is it coming from? What is it on the other side of the mirror? The future. Sir Miles receives a report that the planted bug on Jack Flint has gone offline. Sir Miles tells him to leave the matter to him. The game is afoot, Michael. Diplomatic immunity. Full speed ahead to codename Quixote. Blimey. Britain's gone mad when we've been away. When in Rome, eh? Low job for the price of a cup of tea, love. Darling, they have 20 TV presenters here. I feel positively plain. You'll never be plain, Fanny. The world's getting more like us every day. It's everything I ever hoped for. Everything is real. Except my tits. Fill me in, baby. Shit. So who was Jack Flint, anyway? We based the cover personalities on popular detective stars from 70s cop shows. Seemed like a funny idea until the Queen's Jubilee in 76 when the enemy caught up with us. We didn't ever expect it to go so. Police! Nobody move! Christ almighty! What have you done to the governor? You're a double agent! I trusted you! You had him here all the time, stringing me along like a bloody wanker! I trusted you, and look what you've done! You still trust me, George. 
You've just forgotten, like Jack forgot. We are the Invisibles. We are the conspiracy. And we're all on the same... Congratulations. You just learned to fly. London, England. Looked at me and said, The nearest description in your language would be fiction suit. Then disappeared into the crowd. So what do you reckon to the Millennium Dome, Fanny? I say build another one. Then Travesty London has tits and a dick like moi. Where's the dick? This is it, isn't it? We fucked this up. I'm an optimist. We may be fighting monsters, but the monsters have made the mistake of taking us on in their own territory. Welcome to the hallucination, you bastards. We're all going to behave like car ads. Glamour, darling. Explosives. Parties. Meet fabulous new people and save the world from the forces of misery. Yeah, it's all starting to boil. Strange days, baby. And I'm in the mood for some aggro. England. Pennington? Have your shadow units standing by. I'll be in touch. Now. George Harper, Psychic Copper, and his partner, Debonair John Six, are on the hunt for their missing governor, Jack Flint, right? Wrong. Nobody's informed George they're all part of the same thousand-year-old conspiracy. The Invisibles we've been chasing turns out to be us. Very bloody postmodern, I don't think. If I hadn't known that since day bleeding one, you'd have been dead as a doorknob. George, you shot me, you bastard. I was protecting you, for God's sake. I thought I was protecting you until Jack's fighting for his life over there. His cover personality was scheduled to die of a coronary tomorrow night. Ah, uh, Jesus fucking Christ. We're all on the same side, George. If you can remember who you were, you'll know that. Of course I bloody remember. Time I was some bloke called Eric Millet. Surly bugger he was. Anarchist. Took ages to get into character for George Harper. You know what? Remember we were talking about what's the worst thing you've ever done? And I told you I artificially inseminated my little brother. Action. Satan Storm. Four. Digging up barrel. In the end, I like George better than Eric. George is a geezer. He likes having a laugh and cooking for nice birds. He's happy. But George Harper is not a bleeding asshole. <sighs> Hope a bloody stung you, foppish bastard. I chose sides. I don't need deep bleeding programming, alright? Now, score settled. What happens when the governor comes bursting out of his cocoon? Put the gun down before this becomes any more ridiculous. Oh, Christ. What brings you here? I'm bleeding to death, Sir Mars, and I vowed never to do in front of a high-ranking member of the British establishment. Shut up. I'm here to discharge an obligation. One of your numbers saved my life, and I don't like to leave death hanging. Now listen to me. You're surrounded by officers of the British Army. I said, why can't we just send James Bond into Serbia? What they said of that, then? James Bond, says the NCO, is a fictional character. Well, my answer to that is, they're the hardest bastards to kill, aren't they? Shut up. Up ahead. Ecstasy in a tent with a boy I hardly knew. I just started walking to get the taste out of my mouth. Maybe you could help me? Nothing seems to make sense anymore, and I'm looking for my friend. So Trani, I'm telling you. Nah, <laughs> bollocks. I'll ask if you... <laughs> oh, fuck, sir. I am cool as Bruce Lee, I am cool as Bruce Lee, I am cool as Bruce Lee, I am... Big bastard had a heart on, Fanny. I couldn't take my eyes off it, darling. How much LSD was in that water you gave them to drink? Enough to disable them. Sir Miles, are you sure I shouldn't come up there with you? No, no, I'm not quite sure why, Michael. Just stay in touch. I felt that. Any further attempts to probe my mind will result in an immediate and fatal temporal lobe hemorrhage, I promise you. Oh, for God's sake, I'm in a great deal of bloody pain here. Why don't you just get to the point and let me find a first aid kit before the goodness just drains out of me? You make me sick. How dare the likes of you challenge my work? Look at you! Ugh. <sighs> Congratulations, he's a drooling moron. Your brainwashing methods are a triumph. Soon he'll be free to believe any simple-minded propaganda you choose to feed him, is that it? You've learned our methods well. Here you all are, running around purging your negative emotions while the beasts prepare to inherit the Earth. I rather suggest you look at this very closely indeed. A satellite of unknown origin in orbit behind the moon. Your fanatics call it Barbalith, am I correct? It would mean a great deal to you if- Ooh, missus, shall I shit myself now, Grandad? What are you talking about, you crazy old man? That's not a picture of the Divine. That's a cheap Xerox of your ass. You sat on the machine of the office party, and that's a picture of your wizened old sphincter matted onto some crappy NASA snaps. Which asylum were you liberated from, little girl? The one you decide to stay in, I said. His eyes went through me like bullets. Well, he's firing blanks now. 
Get a picture of me and Fanny throwing up at this poor woman's mortal remains, Helga. I promise to have you on candid camera, but shit, ah! Christ, all fucking mighty, it's a tragic free-for-all. Who the fuck's cock was that? <laughs> She's right, we're not interested in fake photographs. If you want my eyes to light up, show me a band-aid and a slim pan of teller. You think you're hiding your fear incredibly well. Dramatic training, yes? Unfortunately, your posture showed. Here, never mind hypnosis. We got the whole scandal on you right here, Lord Bleeding Snooty. Nemu Yoi Editions, May 1960. Self-published. You're nicked. Where did you? There are three telepaths in the room, Sir Miles. And we made you decide to come here. You're just not that strong anymore. You walked right into this. Social Darwinism is the proper religion of the New Age. The real war between jazz and rock and roll. Tell that to Khrushchev. If he was here, I would. Sorry, I couldn't help noticing you were upset. I find Picasso incredibly moving, too. Yes. How very kind you are, young man. There were keys. Thirteen of the mirrors once. One for each zodiac sign. Mankind in its despair had attracted the despairing ones. The forgotten. Before our very eyes, our reality, our entire frame of reference had become a breeding ground for a kind of bacterial civilization. A machine race of meaningless, ruthless efficiency, endless ghettos, atrocity camps, an empire of psychic army ants eating its way through the very foundation of things. Like them. Like the old ones. I'm sorry, is the experiment still in progress? I'm experiencing the effects very strongly now. Time is... I'm not sure if I'd like to continue this much longer. Seedon? Initiation never ends, Rather Nemo. The Master Therion tells us that a new Aeon is arriving to replace the age of the dying, resurrected Father God. Through peril I met the others, and that one, that monstrous man, Seedon. We are to be ministers of the new Aeon of Horus, the child who destroys to create. He will come on fiery wings, on tides of blood. But he is a child god, and that's a secret. Ugh. The space photograph is a fake. We faked it. We infiltrated your office several years ago. Your man, Pennington? What? Jack Flint died in a fire. Yeah, you're all right, Governor. Nothing a good hose down won't kill. <sighs> Nothing stays buried forever. We know you murdered Beryl Wyndham. We think we know why. North Africa. I flew jet fighters with the Egyptian Air Force back in the late 60s. I crashed my plane in the desert 60 miles from here. Like you, I had an unusual experience. Close encounter, you might say. A month later, I met my Sufi teacher, Abu Ibn Said, just as I said I would. He quoted from Rumi, I am the life of life. I am that cat, this stone, no one. I have thrown quality away like an old dish rag. I see and know all times and worlds as one, one, always one. So what do I have to do to get you to admit who is speaking? Admit it and change everything. This is your own voice echoing off the walls of God. Anyway, you're leaving us tomorrow, eh? Back home to England and the war against the dark forces poised to strangle freedom. I'm nobody's fucking soldier, man. I'm trying to figure things out bit by bit. They're different all the time, aren't they? Sometimes you see them like aliens or monsters or, or else the ancient god or fairies or some shite. I want to know what they look like in the nude, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's just have it straight for once, eh? The truth dazzles gradually or else the world would be blind. What do you think they would look like? Those others. I think they'd look like us. To the point you couldn't tell the difference. That's just what I think, though. Thinking is the first prerequisite for a potential little messiah like yourself. You're an exceptional fellow. Fuck off. And fuck you too, my friend. That's it. There you go, old man. You're one of us now. I suppose I felt most alone after my mother died. I miss her so much. She was such a frail, decent woman. My father was a terrible bully. If there were really some way to reach her beyond that veil. But you know there is, Miles. If you'd like me to introduce you to some people, all you have to do is ask. Beryl, it keeps moving to yes. Does it? Perhaps I asked it something about you, Miles. Secretly and under my breath. But Pennington's been with me on this since... Since around when we asked him to be. Or was it you? You did hire him, after all. You're a talented and intelligent young man, Miles, and what's more, you're one of us. We want you back where you belong. 
we'd also like you to do something for us. In return, we're offering complete access to the occult books in our private vaults. Knowledge is more important to me than anything else. I am on this earth to learn how to master it. This is your life, Sir Miles. We're not going to war with you this time. No guns, no bodies. This is nothing you'd understand. You should listen to us. It's true, isn't it, that you've been initiated into the ultra-secret degrees of anti-masonry. The doctrine proceeds from the notion that the cornerstone of the universe is a block of antimatter currently known as the Kaaba, or Holy Stone of Mecca. I'll have you raped and killed. You couldn't know. Of course not. I just made it up to prove how easily we can undermine your ideas about what's real and what's not. You come here to frighten us with tales of monsters from beyond? We dote you with LSD and Key 23. You may think the universe is sick, the Miles, but we rather think we've found a way to inoculate. We are the future. We'll swallow all your poisons and piss them out as vintage champagne. The monsters you fear are here. Horus has come, and there's nothing you can do to stop him. Or us. The invasion of the body snatchers is underway. There is only us. Here, put this in a frame and give thanks to God it didn't make tomorrow's breakfast news. The press has enough on you, Miles, to turn you into a bigger public laughing stock than David Dick and Monica Lewinsky on a bicycle made for two. Really? You, Sir Patrick, are like an ant perched on the rim of a teacup, perched on the rim of a volcano. You have no concept. Of what you're bloody well talking about? Dead right. But I do know this. Your masters have washed their hands of you. As for your bloody pet monster, well, that put to sleep like a qualified veterinary surgeon. At no extra expense as a taxpayer. Beryl Wyndham, thou art avenged. Some things you know you shouldn't have done. I lied about my mother, Beryl. It is for my initiation into the anti-brotherhood. Oh, God. What have you done to me? Do you remember the prisoner? I had to prove I was beyond compassion. Beyond humanity. Well, Sir Miles, to all intents and purposes, I'm afraid you are in the village. From Ariel at Gloriano.freeserve.uk to Rexpop at Virgin.net Date June 20th, 1999 Subject, The Day-to-Day -day. The day-to-day -day existence of the elderly, like that of the magician, is filled with an extraordinarily high level of coincidence. Everything ultimately repeats itself. One seems to stand still while the faces and backgrounds blur past at an ever-increasing rate, like that scene from the film of the time machine. The furniture flickers, rearranging itself. Skirts are short, then long, then short again. Hair flows and dries up and flows once more. Imagine then the life of the elderly magician. One long, shining thread of coincidence. Can you tell I've been smoking as I write? Tomorrow's my birthday, Gideon. I have a lot of summing up to get through before morning. Tomorrow I will be 99 years old, and long ago I made a private decision to stop before I reached 100, just to be contrary. I refused to give the Queen the pleasure of sending me a congratulatory telegram. And 99 is the number of all endings. From Ariel, date May 11th, 1999. Subject. My adventure begins. Carmageddon, Part 1, Tantrika Before settling my affairs and joining you in India, I'd made a gift of my lifetime's tantric journals. A great deal of spent ink, dear, to our people at the cost. It was here I finally met your old friend, the Marquis. My dear Lady Manning, I have heard the most lascivious rumors. I'm quite sure you have, but I am no longer lascivious, Monsieur de Sartre. I am ninety-nine years old in June. You look remarkably robust for a man who died two hundred years ago. Sin puts a spring in my step. My afterlife is spent reading and researching here, engineering a new world. So many of humanity's ignorant cruelties can be blamed on thwarted libido, I think. At Lacoste we peel soft bodies and minds from the suffocating armor of repression, shame, and guilt. Dos men, monsieur, dos men. My senses are still remarkably well preserved. Forgive my enthusiasm. I spend a great deal of time behind bars with only my filthy thoughts to sustain me. Here I can translate my ideas into flesh, destroy taboos, eliminate boundaries. From Rex Pop to Ariel. Date May 14th, 1999. Subject Indian Summer. May in Varanasi, 25 degrees and wet. 
It's like the sixth circle of the Inferno here. He just, where they flail the asses off the howling heretics and the men who fuck marine life, etc. NATO stomping on the Balkans while India and Pakistan threaten one another with nukes. Dead from the waist down on MTV. The humidity's making me horny and mad. I miss Robin. In his new book, Ken Wilber calls it Skin Hunger. I feel like I'm building up charge. Monsoon's on its way. From Ariel to Rex Pop. Date, May 14th, 1999. Subject, wanking? Dearest Gideon, I shan't succumb to your steamy prose. You've had me once, and my yawns were heard throughout eternity. For my part, I'm beginning to succumb to skin nausea here. This art is combining and splicing genders, realizing fantasies, sending his little boats into the raging ocean of human desire. Today, on the grand tour of his erotic laboratories, I asked him outright, What about the people who disagree with your vision of sexual utopia? We will catalog that perversion also and permit them to continue its practice privately among consenting adults. He has an answer for everything, although not always a good one. London, England. Keep the change, Abdul. So yeah, I'm asking, you got a girlfriend, Jack? What's it to you? Fancy me, eh? You should be so lucky. Lucky, fucky, lucky. Jesus, I only fucking asked, Ringo. Fuck, I'm horny. That's is the first best fucking suit you ever owned, right? Yeah, so fucking what? See, I don't usually fuck when I'm working. I like feeling edgy, you know? I got a gun in my hand. I need access to that trigger-happy spinster bitch crouched in my fucking womb. Fucking shut up, eh? You're making me fucking edgy, man. I just want to lie down for a bit. Fucking hell, not bad, eh? This fucker used to be my old history teacher at the school. Big monkey. We used to laugh at him. Wouldn't mind getting some of them back to see where he's pissing now. Shit. Ooh. That's Helga. Helga? Who the fuck's Helga? The one you said, hey, Jolly Roger and Jack Frost out of Africa and reporting for duty if you can tear your head out of the fucking can for five minutes. What are you, a supermodel? <coughs> nice ass, Helga. I can see your appendix scar from the fucking inside. <coughs> I was born with a little brass engine instead of an appendix. I've been expecting you both. Sorry, not disgusting of me. Hi. You have to excuse me. I've been trying to learn an alien language and it all came back up. From Ariel to Rex Pop. Date May 15th, 1999. Subject, Blue Light. Monsieur de Sade has created tantric engines, perpetual motion orgasm generators with moving parts made of people, his organoth. His eyes blaze when he talks about the sex theories of Wilhelm Reich, and he clearly sees his own applications of Reich's work as a solution to the current world's every problem. The blue light indicates the presence of what Dr. Reich called orgone. We've seen the light itself condensed into a substance with very unusual properties. We've converted this part of the building into a gigantic orgone accumulator, you see. Fluctuations in the rhythm and the swimming pool orgy are precisely calculated to manipulate weather conditions around the chateau. I encountered similar effects when I visited Organon in 1951. I heard my friend Fierro bringing his or her lover to climax in the summer house. The flowers and vines inhaling carbon dioxide, visibly growing and rising in the rain. One result of our work is to reverse the chaotic physical and emotional paralysis which fills in for human interaction in these days, Desaad insists. It's like watching newborn angels rising from shattered suits of iron, he told me, and it was such a vivid image that I wrote it down immediately in order to use it as my own elsewhere. Who knows what freedoms might be achieved on a larger scale? From Rex Pop to Ariel. Date, May 16, 1999. Subject, wet dreaming. It's not a weird dream. I was in Paris searching for your house. One of those dreams where you vaguely recognize where you are, but it's not right. One like that. I forgot the rest that's been echoing about in my head all day. I wandered down to the cremation gats this morning, first time in ten years. They say Baranasi exists in some weird suburb of normal space and time. To die here is to be released from the Wheel of Karma. Today's omen. I found a February new scientist in my hotel on top of the wardrobe. Turns out some physicist called Michael Grady has published a theory suggesting all of space-time is an enormous crystal solid growing in a five-dimensional fluid. Everything is becoming real, as predicted. The gats feel haunted. I keep expecting to meet myself here. Caligula would have blushed. 
the future, the present, and the past, all equally now, equally available as facets of the same structure. From Johnny Monolith at Hotmail.com to RexPop at Virgin.net. Date, May 16th, 1999. Subject, the smile, the handshake. I told you how I'd been approached after our report at Crowley's desk, the 11 o'clock call. I finally had come to the attention of an even more shadowy branch of intelligence, based on the old wartime tunnels in Whitehall, apparently. Now read on. Going down. When you say to be made an offer, you'll bloody see. Key? I'd like to introduce you to a very important colleague of mine. Good heavens. Basically, they've asked me to work for them. John Six. You come highly recommended. An hour ago, I was watching an injured fox having its limp on an animal hospital. You want me to fix fox leg, I'm willing to give it a go. Otherwise, recommended for what? We've followed your work with Division X, Six. You've been our link with the terrorists, and you helped coordinate the department's checkmate of Sir Miles Delacourt. How much longer must I fillet your ego? One, there is no terror cell. They're all very lovely friends of mine. Two, in my time I've worked for the Civil Service, the Teachers Union, the Samaritans, and the Kalsiger Bobs in Stoke Newington. So why should you work for us when you don't even know who we are? I don't think we've mentioned work at all. Do you recognize this? And glory. Heard some of the gory details. By God, why don't you just leave me with a hydrogen bomb in my desk drawer and have done with it? There are tunnels here. Old places from before the war. Ours is a very old organization, but we always try to move with the times. Would you care to join us, Mr. Six? So I thought I'd say yes. Why not? Your elegant turncoat, Mr. Six. Dear Edith, I took this picture at Kajaharo, one of the world's earliest porn theaters. The woman on the left looked like she just remembered she left the gas on. I had my old recurring dream again. Robin always said it was just a classic primal scene, me walking in and my mum and dad shagging the insurance man at the kitchen table or something. But it's not from the past, it's from the future. It's my strongest memory of the future. A bullet in the right place can change the world. You make a fine pornographer, monsieur. You have mastered the mathematics of lust, but I fear yours is still the utopia of burlesque shows and what the butler saw machines. There is progress to be made here, but... Something is missing from your equations and catalogs. Perhaps you still need time to understand what that something is before you unleash the sod land on the hoi polloi. When time begins to ripple around Lacoste, I suggest you will be close. I also expect it will happen in the presence of my dear Fierro and your driver. You are a most audacious man, monsieur. Ah, well, there you have me, my dear Lady Manning. And so I took my leave of the ghostly monarch of the kingdom of flesh. Pornographers, in our turn, dear lady, may also play our part. When the dam bursts, we'll all be wet through. Well, I'm not sure if I like this new fellow, but may I say again how very fond I've grown of you and Fiero. Mademoiselle, I hope you both have adventures, you and your odd little babies. I was never able to have any of my own, of course. Beastly little things. Love, Edith. Send. Fancy meeting you here, Mason. Carmageddon, Part 2, Type Omega. I read the same book. Weird. Well, I've been doing what you suggested. Staying mostly in flea pits, but checking into a five-star hotel every week when I leave my shorts laundered. Somebody left the book in this little room I had in Kaikaru. I read it on top of Ayers Rock. Anyway, the Kardashev classification of technological ability goes like this. A Type 1 civilization is able to use energy on a planetary scale, altering the local environment, building and reshaping it. Us, right? And Type 2 would have access to the energy equivalent of the sun, which means Type 2s can structure and manipulate entire solar systems. Type 3s then would operate on a galactic scale, with access to the energy equivalent of the whole Milky Way. It's a lot of birthday candles. The amazing thing is where Barrow extends the classification to imagine a hypothetical type Omega civilization, remember? A race so advanced in the manipulation of space, time, and matter that they can create and control whole universes. And what would they look like? If they could move through space and time at will, how would we know them if we saw them? The last few months, I've had a lot of time to think about what happened to me as a child. The sickness, the abduction. What happens when you work in a fish factory? 
you eventually ignore the persistent bad smell, right? If you live by a busy highway, you stop hearing traffic noise eventually. Things become invisible to us when they're there all the time. You know what I'm talking about. It happened to you too, didn't it? Once or twice. Always the same in the end. Details change, that's all. Why is that, Mason? I've hung out with dozens of people who've experienced this whatever it is. I've read Philip K. Dick and Terrence McKenna, Whitley Stryber. Every nervous system makes its own model of the event. Alien abduction, satanic abuse, shamanic trial, temporal lobe epilepsy, whatever. I don't know if they're aliens, or time travelers, or neural spasms. What I know is this. Unusual information and insights seem to download into the brain. A kind of ego annihilation is followed by euphoric reintegration and a sense of extended understanding. There's a surge of creative energy. All time is understood to be happening simultaneously. Weird synchronicities occur constantly. A new relationship with time, the self, and death. It won't necessarily do you any good if you're attacked by Lion or that inspector. How was it for you, Mason? Alien germs versus antibodies in the bloodstream of reality? Tired of the big hoax coming along. I call San Francisco every month. Takashi's well and has a new girlfriend. The Pentagon are very interested in our software. Development money pours in. There's always money for weapons. Takashi, of course, is booby-trapping the software and spending the dollars on his time machine. It'll be ready, he tells me, within the next decade. <laughs> no odd feelings about blowing up your house, then? The shock was good for me. Got me moving and living again. Don't worry about it. Having a better one built. Can we all come and live, Mason? John Six's cell continues to torment Sir Miles in a distracted and chaotic attempt at brainwashing and to taunt the authorities with ridiculous clues. London, England. At least you're in time for once. Perfume and cigars, what is it with you? They were valuing one just like this on Antiques Roadshow. Probably saw Churchill through the darkest day of the war. This is no time for your brand of so-called sophisticated ironic humor, Six. The masks are off. I'm warning you. So Harper's with Flint as we speak. The dwarf beckons, Mr. Crowley. After you. You've been spotted, Six. The department heads like your spunk. The tip of the top, God help us all. The top's a long way down. He's making the sign of Hippocrates. Shh. Don't you shh me. There's a blood top secret business if you uncovered. Last night, Flint regressed below all 18 of his previous cover identities and recalled a primordial persona. A pre-bloody natal self, no less. Yeah, we've got him down here at HQ. It's like a wild animal half the time. I'm recording all faithful, but it don't sound like the governor no more. The immune drive's accelerated on impact. Untranslatable concept. When it's your shock, hid behind the billion masks of God, we've regenerated all but the deepest trauma sites. Emoth. Talking complex. George. Sorry, mate. John dreams of the complex structure. It was one code name we all used for a while. Sorry, I'm... I'm all right, George. However it looks, I'm all right. And part of this is still the governor. This part, see? The governor's had a blinding bath and a headache down here in the material plane. So shut it, George. Let me get back to base. That's more like it. She is, governor. Of course, it was all very different in 1924. We had the Raj. Somehow, I always thought the Indians were at the most splendidly Indian when they had an enemy to fight. Now they want satellite television and miniskirts, and we want sitars and bindis. Varanasi, India. More controversial used, Lady Manning. Controversy trots at my heels like a poodle, young man. I have trained it to do so. Edith, that hash is fucking preposterous. London, England. You look like that video for the Eurythmics. What? Sweet dreams. You and Jolly Roger, you know. Hey, it's bad enough without you starting. How am I supposed to act like a fucking cop if I can't even do my fucking tie? Fucking hell. How are you supposed to do this? I'm going to do a news to my eyes, young man. I haven't put a tie on since my grand got run over. Here. Playboy, playgirl. I love this. You look lovely, Jack. You're always lovely. You're all right, Fanny. Feels pretty weird stopping back home. Might as well be another fucking planet now. By the time we've finished, darling, it will be. All right, then. It still shrieks 80s to me. I can practically hear the flock of seagulls. Listen to the dancing queen. The 80s are cool for the next few minutes, okay? 
I read it in a glossy fucking magazine. I'm happy looking like Annie Lennox. I didn't say that. I saw you as the other one with the beard. Hey, I can weave a beard from the hair you just scraped off your ass. Varanasi, India. I'm sure I knew one of the Langs in the thirties. A syphilitic chap with a boss eye. My grandfather. You were telling us about the Hand of Glory. Tonight you activated it. What happened, Lady Manning? Please. Well, we'd all been rather reckless. Not in our way at the time. Then Freddy started to scream. An awful sort of wail. Like a cat being flattened by a Lagonda. We'd spent such a long time sharing one another's thoughts, and then it was like falling all at once into an endless shrinking well like Alice. Smaller and smaller until everything you were was folded so far in on itself was gone forever. It happened in an instant. Then he just went out like he'd been switched off. Our rash little experiment bent time, there's no doubt. We were able to see around time's corners for an odd little while. And in the end, we saw things we could not explain, nor properly endure. Freddy spent six months in a sanitarium. I have a photograph of him looking wild-eyed and unshaven in a pair of striped pajamas. Freddy, ill in bed, 1924. He never forgave me. It wasn't until later we realized just how ill he'd become. He wasn't Freddy at all, really. And after Ron Tolliver was killed in Spain, our little band of invisibles seemed to come apart. I went to America, where I married and divorced two charismatic lunatics, one after the other. I missed all the ghastliness that befell everyone after the war. I was knee-deep in ghastliness all of my own making. And when I returned to England briefly, aged 70, and with an immensely readable collection of diaries, I hasten to add, it was a very different world. You ask me about time and what I've learned after working my way through rather a great deal of it. I'll tell you one more story about dear Mr. Reddy, my tantric teacher from long ago. You can decide for yourself, Mr. Lang. It happened in this very hotel, of course. Perhaps it's still happening now. Mr. Reddy was a strange one. His prodigious penis quite distracted me from his curious words. But I did write them down, and I found them only recently. What did he say? I typed it all into my computer. Conditions within time are ferocious. Our suits begin to disintegrate after the first twenty years, at which moment he ejaculated in reverse, holding the semen in his testicles. I was lost for words, but I wondered what he meant by his suit. And, as though hearing my thoughts, he first ignited my kundalini. Then he stripped off. I shan't forget that in a hurry. Time can be tricky. One false move and suddenly you're a hundred. All right, Mason. Ghost story got you paranoid? Stone from her pipe. Needed some air. So hot. What are the chances of us meeting here, now? All these coincidences. All seeing edges of something so big and so obvious it's invisible its entirety. All the time she was talking. What would a type Omega civilization look like to us? Look. London, England. Where are we? You'll see. This was a road to the other world in old times when our organization was introduced. Two hundred million years ago in the Triassic period, the salt pans stretch in every direction. We still meet here. Those who search for us become us. Here in the bowels of the city, here in the cellars and in the subways. Have you made your decision? For all I know, you could be asking me to betray everything and everyone I've cared about for the sake of what exactly? Still, you know me. I'll try anything twice. Show me these bowels of yours. Varanasi, India. I hate being old and tired. I hate not being able to dance. I hate smelling of damp and antique perfume. My suit is quite worn out. Edith? You know I have always risen to the challenge of fashion. For a long time I've known exactly what I intended to do with these old clothes. I've come here to die, Gideon, and you shan't dissuade me, dear. But let me tell you why. 23 o'clock p.m., 30 milliliters, Q. 
key 23, directly the angular gyrus to the language cortex. High speed random letter combinations, loading. Key 23 is a synthetic mind control agent. Under the influence of this drug, written words appeared to be what they describe. I tried it with the word bliss scrawled in a card my little sister drew for me. I entered a state Buddhist called Nirvakalpa Samadhi. The rapid drop in metabolic function almost killed me. Authors we read because they make us comfortable and always give us more of what we want. Or the... Rewinding too far. Recording? The 38 extra letters of the alphabet are kept secret by those at the highest level of so-called global control. Sound reconstructions of many words in the uber spec are now available and if terrestrial words become things under the influence of key 23, what will I see if I expose myself to alien words? It takes seconds. Some glossolalia occurring. I'm not scared. I'm a logonaut. I'm not. 1123, alphabet generator. They're breeding like rabbits. Carmageddon, part three, six minus six. Not sure when I'm saying this now. Is this a recording, or am I talking? The alien language mutates the base phonem. Vowels unfold into higher dimensional forms. Double I's and triple O's, compressed consonants, S's and eta. Ah, it's beautiful. Say, wow. Ah. We're trying to free them, but they don't understand. I do. Um, was I recording that? What happened? 5 a.m.? Jesus, where have I been? Who was I talking? Barbalus. Varanasi, India. I guess you're right. It gets to that point where you don't want to stop. The world feels like it's turning underneath you and the momentum's just... Still stone, Mason? I know what you mean. Still places to go. People to eat. Go with the hug, man. Before people think we're a couple of homos. Something for you. The film you were rambling about the other night. The one you said explained everything. Don't let your cleverness get the better of you, Mr. Lang. Take care, dear. RVM module reference. In the taxi, Mason remembered the name of the movie. Thomasina. In the hotel room with Edith and Gideon, Mason Lang explains. It's about this ginger cat who dies and comes back to life, and her name in the film is Thomasina. Even though ginger cats are generally male, I always thought anyway. That's... Families like yours don't get rich without one or two Nazi skeletons in the closet. I'm officially the black sheep of the family. The banking cartels have made threats via dad. Even if they shut me down completely, I've made enough from Uncle Sam to build a fleet of time machines behind his back. In the hotel lobby, Ragged Robin is reading poems from her diary to Mason Lang. On the mountaintop, Mason Lang conquers Kilimanjaro. Why shouldn't you always hope for the best? RVM reintegrated. Reroute to base tracker. I thought you were the Grim Reaper. Brought your breakfast and a half ounce of Jamal's finest for your sinuses. My old mom would kill me if she saw this. She never gets this treatment. Well, perhaps if she'd fucked you, she would have, dear. That honey or mustard. Edith, tell me you're not serious about dying. The British authorities aren't too concerned with the fate of Sir Miles. They have their plans in motion. The demon Orlando takes the flesh of his direct supervisor in the normal part of government, Simon Pennington, to aid with the coming coronation. You have a bad reputation. You know me, Sir Miles. I'm one of your kidnappers, the crazy Bader Meinhof girl. One of those hoaxers crazed on solar flares, ready to do any insane thing for publicity. Or something worse. Your brief was to find opposition, of course. And surprise, it's always there. Are you familiar with the Black Grail? The Cup of Abominations? Said to contain the shit and spunk of Judas as he spasmed to his death at the end of a rope with thirty pieces of silver jingling in the pockets of his caftan. Bringing them to this sphere always requires sacrifice. Human bait. Azathoth's entry into the material plane in 1945 was affected by the blood and agony of millions. How many will die on the battlefield this year to draw down the Archon of this Aeon? Do you know what I am? My milk turns babies sick and mad and makes corrupt old men of them in seconds. I steal children and put them in pies for evil mothers to eat. I am a Generation N war avatar. My sons are skeletons. 
my daughter's abortions. I am the barbed wire mother, the queen archon, or an orthocrossy. So please, show me your interrogation technique. Break my spirit with a word. Tell me my worst fear and make me cry. Expose my weaknesses. Go on. What if all the things you think I fear are actually the things you fear most? Wouldn't you be scared then? <clears throat> Talk, Sir Miles. Varanasi, India. The key to it all is Billy Chang in the end. It's all in my memoir. Scandal after scandal. There was some beastly business in 1929 when he was locked away for over a year in Wormwood Scrubs. They deported him in the end from Albert Docks. Enough, enough. I haven't had a drink since 1969. Billy, of course, we tended to romanticize the Chinese in those days. They seemed so decadent and deep. But Billy was a very strange and remarkable man. And well, he vanished in the end, you see. There were rumors he died deaf, blind, and penniless, but that wasn't it at all. Maybe I'll just read it. Why does Bertha have a last supper ambiance? Take a photograph. I've been doing a great deal of thinking, and what I've come to is this. Amid all the bangs and the drama and the grand passions, it's kindness and just ordinary goodness that stands out in the end. I had a miscarriage in 1933. It's my own fault, really. My sex life was colorful, to say the least. At first I thought I'd wet myself. And of course, we all wore silk stockings in those days. It had bounced halfway down the stairs of Fortnum and Mason before I realized it had a face. I sat down in the ruin of my womb, crying my eyes out piteously. And I'll never forget such a very kind gentleman. He'd actually scooped it up in his hat. I just remember him in front of me, holding it, as though he'd done something so humanly right. And there was such a look of abject concern in his eyes. Imagine Jesus' eyes. Bon Appetit. London, England. I don't know how you're doing it, but I've been watching you. There's light curvature of the shoulders, which you consciously correct. You don't move like one of them. Their nerve sensitivity is surgically enhanced ten thousand fold. They burn in constant pain like the sun. Like those days in the meadow when things had become unreal and strange for you. You were about eleven or twelve. The eldest child, gifted, dreamy, bowed by responsibility you need only hand to. I can see the Ericksonian commands emerging through your sentence structure. All of your neurolinguistic techniques are visible to me as emergent structures. What are you? This is Key 23, isn't it? I'll have you lobotomized and turned into a doll. Get in line, Dad. Lucky for you, I'm here to cut you a deal. As the female spider said to the male. Varanasi, India. Seventy-five years to the very day. That was the same year I met you. How very eventful time is. Your shirt is wet through, and my frightfully heavy. You're like balsa wood, Edith. If I throw you in the air, the currents will waft you to Calcutta. Just testing. It's not like you stayed young while I've grown old. Not to me it isn't. It's more like you've become more solid and I less so. I remember when we met the second time and I thought I was an incredibly old woman. Well, at least I could walk then. On the burning gat. What a serious young man you were, Gideon. Tell me again what you were doing that day. I was watching a cremation. I looked up and you were hobbling towards me in a hat. There was no cremation. Only you saw it. To die in Benares is to be liberated from the cycle of rebirth, whatever that means. Such an outrageously confident claim, isn't it? Well, I vowed a long time ago to put it to the test. That's one promise I kept anyway. Edith, can you stand? I feel like the last few matches in the box. Take me seriously, or I should tell a policeman you've been interfering with me. In perfect Hindi, if need be. You're sure about this? The water's like sewage, Edith. Oh, you're silly as Freddy. This is the sacred Ganges. The microbes are part of the magic. Or, as Mr. Reddy taught me to say, the Tantra. Bugger, Majesty. 
I'm not afraid of death's door. I'm sure I shall find Freddy crouched behind it, listening in on us with his tumbler. Edith, thought I'd better call the doctor. She has a temperature of 125. She's a very old lady. I'm determined. Gideon, do you remember when we made up those funny songs at the piano in 1924? Better than you can. It's only two years ago for me. I can do some new ones if you want. Her heart. She's very ill. Oh. It really is quite a serious business at times. Edith? Where are you, Edith? The manager would like... Shh. I fainted on the roundabout. You're the only one of my old friends who made it. Oh, there they are. Of course, it's time. She, I know, 1123, she knew exactly what she was doing. I can see the iterations, like the same door and sarcophagus scrolling past when the mummy's chasing Scooby and Shaggy along miles of dreamlike hallway. And Edith's dead. She hit the rim of the wheel of karma and escape velocity did the rest. I burned her skinny body and painted my skin with her ashes. The acid's coming in from the edges now, crackly and fast. Three too many. Three too many. Seemed like three too many. My holy arse charring on the coals. Deep in the night panic of the cremation ground, sweating in the heat of people oxidized to carbon for purely religious reasons. Shit. Getting harder to write. So much of it to get down now. The connections. Everything's connecting like the whole world to join the dots picture. The invisible emerging as a pattern from nowhere. A thought thinking itself. Edith's last email. The memoir. Spliced with the alien language software Helga downloaded. Plus the acid. Last night in Varanasi on the molten edge of time and space. Everything is coincidence here. Just like the coincidence of the light coming on when you flip the switch. Try taking drugs and sitting in graveyards and channeling the dead through your laptop. See what happens. Carmageddon, Part 4. Smile. Helga calls her alien alphabet generator Kali, which I know I can talk her and six into being an acronym for Kabbalistic Alien Language Initiator or something. The screen's a storm of fucked and fucking text, the Roman alphabet fertilized by Helga's holographic syntax, and like a Ouija ghost appearing in the smoke of someone's cigarette, Edith's voice emerges, visible in the letterfalls and grammar bursts, the keys moving on their own. The Millennium Dome, the spiked breast, the wire mother, the temple of Anti-Diana almost complete on the banks of the Thames, the toxic womb, the buried bodies in Saddlewolf Moor, kill all little innocents. The bad mother is being subconsciously evoked, cruel Britannia, her monster child suckled on toxic milk. Edith's voice and her words and mine as I try to write this down. She's forming a language kaleidoscope on screen. Ganesh is a scribe of the gods. I'm seeing the super Sanskrit on his word processor screen, the play of Lila endlessly unfolding and ever-present, ghostly in Edith's ashes, choking on the fumes and the melting black flakes that were bodies once. She's coming in from the edges, all around at once. The voodoo spider queen of space. Mass human sacrifice in the Balkans. The monsters are here, incarnate. Christ almighty. Five trips was three too many. Porting down Weapons Research Center, England. The baths, so they call it down here, keeps it light. The very high turnover of staff, clinical depression, and a curious tendency to develop abnormal fetishes and sexual fantasies about the tadpoles. Baffling to me, Mr. Special Agent Black, MI None. My number, date, official, C numbers, ID. We're trustworthy, a little strange, to be expected. Here to install new time travel codes. Childhood memory, Doctor Who, happy to be a little scared. You're deep, we acknowledge your intelligence, and tank operatives are being recalled appropriate for, don't overlook this, re-imprinting. Yes, well, that's all in order, of course, Agent Black. Special agent. Yes. Anyway, without further ado, eh? Meet our sleeping beauties. Apologies for the pong. <laughs> These are Generation 5 Cyphermen, specially adapted soup kitchen vans trawl for the homeless and care in the community types. 
social work department also does a marvelous job keeping us stocked with fit young men and women who'd otherwise be injecting bleach into their genitals or whatever it is they do for fun nowadays. Ego deletion and reinstallation, human to tadpole in less than a week now. Image vulnerability has reduced their resistance to zero. And off they go, state of the art remote viewers, capable of seeing and traveling through time as well as space. Psychic killer bees obeying the voice of the hive. I get carried away sometimes, thinking of what they must see. These new codes, instantly lethal. Leave this to the experts. I'll just wait outside and listen to them simply read then, shall I? Tell me when it's safe to turn down the volume. Simply read? Fuck, let him stay. His brain's already liquidized. Don't tell me, you learned acting from a fucking arcade game, you cheap fuck. Instantly lethal? At least I fucking said something. We're in, eh? I was brilliant, totally fucking went for it. But you're back in traction with that slapping, Ringo. Jesus, why do they get off and doing sick shit to people? Here we go round the mulberry bush. Anchor code. Wee wee. Here we go round. Anchor target. Wee wee. Right about the reek. Ammonia, fucking piss, and meat. Do it and let's get the fuck out, hon. What was that subliminal shit when you were talking to it? Found out about it in Egypt. I just sort of looked through his eyes and changed what he's seeing. It's not like something you do. Alright, these fuckers are about to go on a fucking time joyride, man. You alright about hearing this? Makes your skull vibrate and your nosebleed. Fuck you. Sounds just like one of my orgasms. Say it. Oh, warm. Gross perinatal matrices. First trauma memories experienced as cosmic horror, global death camps, monstrous technology, poison babies, birth, Mason on the Matrix. The last of Edith washing off in the Ganges, kissing the dirty, ancient Ganges, 38 degrees as the monsoon breaks and ionizes the air till it glows. Immortality, menstrual, infinite, time, space, and death, kiss and live indefinitely, should be sick. The words are entering my bloodstream, swarming of the infection and translating it. I see the immune language at work, converting bacteria into text as I write. Dreams are filled with places, people, and things, and yet they're all made of the same substance. The dream enemy is as much you as is the dream hallway, the dream sky. All unfolded from the same substance, all seeming distinct and separate. He is being dead is like something being born, she says. Nowhere, England. Doesn't matter who I am. Only the concept of division divides us, Sir Miles. When you were young, your journey in search of the invisible led you to the altars of dark gods, forgotten ones. All powerful, primordial monsters gnawing their way back into an unsuspecting universe. And soon they will come to neuter you, sew up your soul like a wound, and make you commandant of Atrocity Camp Earth. You dedicated your life to this? Enough! How dare you talk to me! You know nothing! Nothing! My work! <laughs> Dirty fuck! Fuck! Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> Adrenaline. Enzyme. You taste scared and old, Miles. We are the midwitch cuckoos. We are the stepford wives. We are the forgotten. The outer church you fear to serve and the invisible college you want to destroy? Same address, Sir Miles. Kill me, you bitch. Get this over with. Be seeing you. Don't be here when I turn around, you horrible old man. Helga! Fuck it, Helga! You didn't let him... This improv has gone bloody mad! Well, Purr's what we're we supposed to do. Keep him as a pet? Think Patty Hurst. Key 23, 100 mils. That's enough to make a blue whale hallucinate in Mandarin. I decide to throw the dice, pervs. London, England. Blue mold? Shared a bedsit in the 70s with a hash dealer who told outrageous stories about the ultimate high, allegedly found growing on the walls of a lost station in the London underground. Let that be a lesson to you. Everything is true. Nothing is permitted. The motto inscribed on the Black Grail. The Hylic Grail of matter. You watch yourself in there, John. Really can't think of anyone else I'd rather watch, Mr. Crowley. I notice the paint's still wet on the wall. The paint is wet on everything if you squint hard enough. Are you ready to be initiated into the oldest trick in the book, Mr. Six? You must come naked, by the way. Not as John Six. Not in any of your masks, your floating identities. Really? When you say naked, would that be health and efficiency style or 
hardcore. Everything is true, nothing is permitted. Isn't that the motto of a fictional anti-Masonic lodge invented solely to aid the derangement of a certain old Etonian initial M? Ah, this is like being on the Dodgems. Whose side are we all on? Or is this Mobius striptease? I have an extravagantly cultured nose, and right now it smells paint drying. You want me naked? You get them off. Haven't you heard? I wear no mask. Several times. I once had Tolkien posters on the wall. I read The King in Yellow and its derivatives. I've also been watching your little colleagues mime me a beginner at a potter's wheel. Those hand movements. If I were to copy them holding a piece of paper, it would look like this, wouldn't it? Of course, that would be your key. Two years detective work in the Potter Division X wasn't all wasted, you see. We followed this all the way to the top. To the secret of mind and the universe itself. My God, what is this place? Forgive our seeming violence, this is the only way to prepare for download. You are playing a game disguised as everything, remember? We'd like to invite you to rejoin the ultimate conspiracy. Welcome to the Harlequinade. Grady's time crystal growing in an infinite eternal information ocean beyond time and space. What will Mason's liquid software look like after 2012? Kali giving birth to skeletons, a picture of space-time seen through the eyes of the fearful, time turning through itself in endless self-generating iterations, endless horror all at once, Belson, Columbine, Cambodia, the torture cells and the cancer in Terence McKenna's head, death all at once triumphant, blood-red ages of Kali. Kali is the terrible mother of the negative universe. When milk is venom and shit is gold and death is life, deranged, reversed entities fill the spaces between things and concepts. Figure to our ground, she says, or vice versa. Knowledge as liquid information. The placenta crashing. The last frantic tidal pulses of a pure, loving, self-sacrificing friend of all friends. Survival information downloading. Instructions to breathe. Edith in Fortnum's. The Ganges flowing through Robin's common blood in that hotel room on the way to Arizona. The last time we made love on our way to saving the world. I'm pregnant, she says. Figure and ground. Is there two profiles facing or is it a cup? Figure and ground. The words squirming like mink across the screen. Mating. The eclipse like a vesic of Pisces. Edward and Sophie. Posh and Beckham for the proles. The royal wedding. Oh, you certainly pick your moments. Freddy, show yourself. Who gives anything to poor Tom, who the foul fiend hath led through fire and through flame? Being dead has certainly not improved your rendering of Shakespeare, Freddy. You brought the cold with you. I had to brutalize the laws of physics to be here. You've no idea. When we discover it, we disappear. It's only a game. It's being wound up folded and put away like Monopoly. Where are you, Freddy? You seem to be everywhere, like a smell. Magic was always about tricks for you. What next? A balloon menagerie? I do love you, Edie. Everyone falls in love with Edie. I love you too, Freddy. Haven't we seen and done such marvelous, awful things, you and I? And how clever and special we all are to be making such big magic. Edith and Tom, talking in a migraine burst of mutating letters, love like an explosion of articulate shrapnel. Five tabs is two and three like them. London, England. Oh my God, Sir Miles! The terrorists, what have they done? Don't worry, Sir Miles, it's all. The foxes in bits, I was in bits. Christ, Osiris wrong for a little boy to see. The Black Grail manifested in Westminster Abbey, August 11th. Dismembered. Give him water. The word drunk from her breast, happening all at once. Bring them through. The court of monsters. The monsters of the abyss. Rex Mundy and the kings of terrors from the sky. The animals screaming forever. No compassion. I had no compassion. No compassion. Uh. Everything becomes numinous, archetypal, like the odd glowing murder weapons on Cluedo cards. 
Everything the tarot trump with endless significance. The table, the door, the telephone, the words. 28. Rich off the books. Sick in the soul and the head after Jackie left and the cats died. Dead end at the river's edge. Hat full of hollow on the headphones. And I thought Edith was dead too, but look. Said excuse me three times now. Young man, would you smile for just one moment? I said the Holy Grail of two faces talking. Will you miss her? Not likely. June 23rd, 1999, Paris, France. She'd been waiting for this since she was 17. There was some prophet guy on TV. He says Paris will be obliterated on August 11th. There's been thousands of years in the planning, you know. Everybody's got the part to play. The Invisibles ride again. You tell the Marquis to be ready. We'll bring the artillery if he brings the orgon. We're having an apocalypse and everyone's invited. Doors open August 11th. No sleep till 2012. Every 11 years, the sun floods the solar system with radiation. The storms have been getting wilder all this century. The last storm of the century started a week ago. Know what they call it? Cycle 23. Here comes the summer. I know the how of it. And the why of it. First contact with the always here, the other things. Merging with them feels like French kissing Mount Vesuvius. And I don't mean when she's dormant. The Mr. Six self axis and copes with the ontological shock incredibly well. It's what he does. Change through conflict, synthesis. Their technology, our technology. The simplest games are the most addictive. Always bet on six. My God. The whole thing's alive and self-aware. And all of a sudden it's 1999 and we're up against it. You all right there, Gaz? Liverpool, 2012. Gaz and Dane. Cold, Dane. That's all. I want to hear how the story ends. Look, it's like lights coming down. It's a bit creepy. Is it Christmas? Not till Tuesday. San Francisco, December 22nd, 2012. Don't let them near the time suit, Fanny. Here comes the king of all. <coughs> Meanplex Prime, there is no fear. All is one. <coughs> time becomes space becomes time. <coughs> time machine go. Space time is the game board. In a moment, you will see what you have always been. I, too, will see what I have always been. We will be together in our understanding. We win. The Invisible Kingdom, Part 1. Planet Stepford. <sighs> Diana died for this. Kosovo was for this. We have primed mankind to experience this event on a subconscious level. Terror and claustrophobia will bring humanity to its knees before the king. The day of poor emotion is near, Sir Miles. The end of the human calendar. I've made it a rule never to talk to demons without an agreed circle. Excuse me. I was told to expect you. This is the culmination. You're Miss Dwyer's replacement? Mr. Dreams, I serve the macrogeometry of Sabbath, the descending king, Archon. I am here to oversee the fine-tuning of the traumatic emotional currents you've harvested. The Archon will manifest as an annihilation of opposites. Everything is in order. Siphonmen are being programmed to patrol the etheric perimeters of the Abbey. Immediately following the incarnation, the Archon will be given expert medical attention at Guy's Hospital. So, Miles, I bring another communication from the outer church hierarchy. Your fear of modification is being seen as an act of resistance. I beg your pardon? Cute, 18-year-old transvestite, blue eyes, stunning figure, A and O levels. From here is everything, how flat the world seems. I'm 27 years old in a flat world, little butterfly. Time is all at once. She breathes gently, and the membrane shivers. All night on my knees. I've even meant to discuss myself. The Zarletal outdid herself. But darling, I've spun webs of glamour all over London. How was your adventure? London, August 9th, 1999. Lord Fanny and Jack Frost. Day returned to Liverpool. The mounds moved on. Married Pete the Wanker. Maisonette in Wolverhampton. What was I going to say, anyhow? Man, the universe isn't what you think. We got aliens and demons and secret languages out here, like on the telly. 
And the world's ending and nobody's telling you, ma'am. And by the way, none of it's real anyhow. I feel great. Yeah. Time light the fire, eh? Elsa had said I was an avatar of Horus, the lord of force and fire. I told him to fuck off. Good for you, Jack. I never saw you as the messiah type. Jesus had size eight feet and never swore, darling. I'd make a great messiah, me. Give all the kids free sweets and everybody the week off. Horus is a kid, right? Comes on all fucking attitude, but all he wants to do is play in the end. Playing is too scary for some people, Jack. Especially playing in the dark. We're putting a lot of trust in the future, but at least we're putting it somewhere we can get to. After this, we're going to Brazil to dance our asses off. Yeah, after this, eh? And this, tss, is for tomorrow. We can do anything, baby. London, August 9th, 1999, Division X. Drafting in 300 armed police officers to patrol the perimeter of the Abbey. Special services have top men on the inside. I'll say this for Miles, he knows how to put on a show. The Blair administration thinks he's the Lord God Almighty. Thelemites in the commons. Had no bloody idea what Miles is involved in. Now relying on terrorists. The apocalypse makes us strange bedfellows. I'll say that for it. Strange bedfellows, one and two. Got them both, sir. That's the point, isn't it? The alchemical marriage is about merging opposites. The sun and the moon, the good guys and the bad guys. It's all symbolic. Christ, no Cortina, George. I bloody told you. How many times do I have to spell it out? All right, Governor. We're all mates, eh? It's the alien. It's all the alien, George. The information's too fast. Too hot. It's everything. This. It looks like everything. Ah, shit. Peeled me right back. What in God's holy name are you blather on about, Flint? I need you compost mentis, Detective Inspector. The Invisibles is an immune program, triggered by the barbalith buoy when the game crashed and embedded the player. Rise and shine. No. Jesus Christ. Too old for this. Beyond frame of reference. Migraine. Skyline. Inverted world. Negative noise. Mamoroid. London, August 11th, 1999. The Invisible Army. Unbroken chain of bloody mayhem since the 1920s. Invisibilism, the cult des invisibles, the unseen faculty, the IT, the ITO. Us. This is it. Spell as long as a century with Edith at the tail and us at the head end. Thought I'd save my official retirement from active fighting about until 2000, just in case we all get taken away in a flying saucer on Wednesday. I've been in the best band in the world. That's what it feels like. Honestly. All the mad days and nights we've been together. Magic in hotel rooms. Here's to the blank badge. And everything around it that makes it seem blank. No more then. No more now. To chaos. It's like the Knights of the Round Table, this. Bollocks. If all we were doctors of the fucking soul, you said. I'm not going in there waving a fucking sword. All not fucking Christian soldiers. This is some fucker's life, man. Ah, Jesus, Ringo. Oh, now he starts fucking demystifying it all just when we need to get high on our own bullshit. Fucking killjoy. Sorry, I fucking opened my mouth. Imagine a human body seen from outside, seen as we truly are and all at once, extended shapes floating in time. What John and I saw, like a tree made of millipedes, all of life back to the root, like coral in a sea of time. Imagine the horror of going outside and being asked, Who are you? Turning back to confront that. Explain the fuck out of that. Yeah? Everything bound within four dimensions is the same thing. Otherwise, it's business as usual. Roger, you're in guns. Fanny, sorcery. I'll do the end of the dragon shit. And Jack, you're it. All for one and one for all. I thought you all fucking nutters. Until I took a good look at myself and threw in the fucking towel. Alright. Eclipse is 11-11 tomorrow, while storming Westminster Abbey while a peer of the realm summons his dark god. It's like Quatermass. Do all my dreams come through? This is fucking mad. Does everybody know what I'm supposed to do? Telekinesis, on the quantum level. We know you're up for it. Excuse me, Jack. They're gonna be late. You better talk to Helga. She shaved her entire body. Hey, baby. I it's like mad. No, last minute preparations for Wednesday. Something's happened. No, it's here. Six wants to bring some meaning into your lives. He's half naked, I warn you. 
He ordered Nazi goring. He always does. It's like a nervous tick. Alright. I just met the secret chiefs of the Invisible Order. They're as alien as the space between your bloody fingers. And I mean that. Yes. They're us. It's either awful or wonderful. I can't tell yet. But the stakes are higher than we thought. And it all hinges on our protege. London, August 11th, 1999. The Marriage of Sun and Moon. Everyone is here, Sir Miles. A tribute to your perseverance and dedication. Sir Miles, congratulations. You have become schizophrenic. Sir Miles? Hearing things. The Archon generates perceptual distortion in its descent. You were saying? The terrorists. The Invisible Army? Deluded, sick outcasts with some firearms and a few books on hypnosis. The Archon's name of King of this World, Rex Mundy, the most terrible of the Five Waters. He will set chains around the globe. This 200-year-old blue-butted by-blow will contain the king of this world. Nothing will be invisible to his multitude of eyes. He will command nightmares, silent armies under his banner. Humankind will be enslaved, processed, and consumed in its sleep. What is the Black Sun? What is the Hylic Grail, Pennington? Is it happening? Sir Miles? He's flipped. King to mob, we're on. Gideon? Hello? I sound like one of those Rod Ive EBP recordings. Sorry, Zen Law, After Life FM. Good to hear your voice, Chucky. What time is it in San Francisco? That's so weird. I was meditating. I was just thinking about you. You sound funny, Gideon. What's up? Remember I said I'd call you first? I was all done with shooting. Been meaning to phone you for ages, Chucky. Where are you? Ah, shit. I end up here somehow after this morning. I just remember walking, thinking about puppets off the telly. Remember Ragtag and Bobtail? The last one ever, with them and the little rabbits waving from the river bank. Going away for the last time. Goodbye, Rag. Goodbye, Tag. Oh, shit. Gideon, what have you done? I just saved the world, Jackie. The Invisible Kingdom 2. Goodbye, Rag. What happened? Why are you... Got myself shot, like you always said I would. A Zen bullet. Zen bullet hits you and everything becomes just as it is for the last time. No matter where you fire it, you hit yourself. I'm not playing end of stage left in this drama you're having. If you're hurt, put the phone down and call an ambulance. Gideon, please, what's happening? I'm shot, that's all. Your number's been going around in my head. Christ, I'm stinking. All dressed up in old coats and stuff at Westminster Abbey. The acoustics were amazing. His neck breaking sounded like a 21 gun salute. London, August 11th, 1999. O tell of God's might, O sing of God's grace, Whose robe is the light, Whose canopy space, Hidden king of filth, King of shame, King of degradation and submission, Whose chariots of wrath The deep thunderclouds form, And dark is God's path On the wings of the storm. Long live the king, eh? It's the culmination of a career. You have to be proud, Sir Miles. The time has come around at last. Sir Miles, are you all right? You don't seem... I'm fine, Pennington. A little exhausted. Preparation. Sir Miles, I'm Roster, sir. Pennington is dead. He was the one who betrayed you. The demon Orlando is wearing his face as a hat over there. Oh, of course. The conscious mind can only hold eight separate things at once. The distinction between you and Pennington is currently not one of those eight. What? Sir Miles, you spoke earlier of a grail. A black grail? That wasn't bullet pointed on my list. My lords, ladies, gentlemen, your royal highnesses. Here to present the aborted guts in of fallen man and corrupted woman. Her Royal Highness. This world, its inefficiency and confusion will be annexed soon. Things will be made whole and unambiguous. Everything with its appointed function in the service of the King Archons. You also. I know. I know I've resisted. I've been afraid to face certain things, but now I, I think I'm ready. I intend to take my vows after the ceremony. I'll see to the sacrifices. Good. 
you will learn a great deal in the surgeries of the doctor fish. Nothing is like the first moment of realization that this is forever. My door was in Philadelphia. Some people had opened the floor. They drank radioactive tarantula venom and read children's stories to the little ones as they chained into maggots, screaming as little ones do when they are made aware of what they truly are. The great ones, the forgotten, the ministers of their aeon. They will be here soon. Change is anathema. This mad world will be cleansed and restored to proper functioning. I saw it once. The church. The abyss. The reverse of the tree of life. Like them. Like the old ones. Humankind is merchandise. Chattel and food for the forgotten. God help me. I've seen their faces. Eating. All of us meet the forgotten. Each to his kind. What did you see? I saw the world beyond the mirror. The future world, where nothing exists that is not part of the machine. The god, the archon of the Aeon. I saw the blood-stained, tiled, and hopeless wall at the end of history. The infinite death camp of tomorrow. And I saw I had a choice. When fear is all there is, there is no fear. Eternal pain is no longer pain. When we remember them, and recognize them for what they are. They cease to enslave us. Excuse me, Sir Miles? Hmm? The eclipse is about to begin. Her Majesty's eager to get her part over with and be back in time for... Are you sure they'll bring the boy? Of course. They planned this for six years. They're probably already here. We screened everyone, sir. They're here. The gate is near. The gate is soft. More blood is needed to affect the intersection. It's done. Tell our master the door will be open. You, Orlando, get out there and watch the perimeter. Something is here. Something familiar. We ran out of children half an hour ago, sir. Well, stop slaughtering these homeless. For God's sake, that's what they're for. Quite a guest list. I invited myself. I hope you don't mind. You shouldn't have come here, Paddy. Gentlemen! Right, everybody freeze! Now then, Miles, best not to have any bullets flying around in here, eh? You could terminally bruise any number of privileged bastards. Right, you heard him, singing him to a bleeding monstrosity that's had locked up for 200 years. So ugly, for crying out loud. Don't waste the boys of reason on these bastards, George. I've seen how it all turns out. Listen, I've remembered this is just a suit for experiencing the invisibles. Fiction suit seems to be the best translation. Like Tom Hanks meeting LBJ and John Lennon in Forrest Gump. Cut and paste. Imagine what that would do to the story. It's what they're doing here. They come in the suits, Jackie. The tripping darlings, the good people, the machine elves of hyperspace. All the shit we believed when we were high on E. It's real and it's us, Jackie. Underneath the suits, it's just us. Like that time in the kitchen. Love, 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 love. She was a girl from Birmingham. England, August 10th, 1999. Time machine burning. That's something you don't see every day. So that's it? You leave it and all? You got me into this, you did. Told me I was a fucking Buddha, the Messiah, come to save Earth from the time monsters. And you're not? Bit bleeding late to tell us that now, Jack. Fuck off. Glad I got into all this. I'm staying even if you go. We can do it without money just as easy now. We can make the world a better place for everybody. Without the guns. Yeah. I knew you'd be the one to figure out how to do that, Jack. You think we can stop bastards like us telling everybody how to live their lives without killing them? You just gotta make friends with them. Make friends with them until they beg for mercy. You can't go back to what you were, can you? I wouldn't know who the fuck he was. He'd think I was a fucking prick. A fucking right and all, he said. Something like that. Can't get his voice right. Three pints of blood missing. He did the impossible this morning. Little Catholic boy on his own against five howling Gnostic demiurges. Gods, eh? The fuckers don't even know I'm coming. You can't stop the Aeon turning, Miles. Stand in its way and it'll roll right over you like a parade float. The Aeon? You still think this is about dilemmic magic? Beyond this, there are no Aeons. There is no evolutionary process. There is only the machine, forever and everywhere. Goodbye, Paddy. Oh, the Lord's my chauffeur. Oh. The Gordonstown Old Boys Club mourns another alumnus. 
and that entire still counts for something. Kill everything here that is not with us. Now. Let me, Sir Miles. Oh, shit. Oh, no. No. It's the Eric Parasite. Oh, shit. It's got him. The hunter killer macro. Watch. It'll kill me, but you'll survive. You what? Shut it, George. Watch how the suit... Ugh. There. Governor! Bastard, you look what you've done, you fucking assholes! Governor! Some kind of seizure. The tadpoles are soiling their tanks and choking on urine and feces. We think the time mattress are contaminated. Porton reports a brief disturbance in the Cypherman tanks. I'm afraid the Abbey's without protection in this time section. The invisible hand shows itself at last. Proceed. Rex Mundy, king of this world, is folding down into this time section. The Archon's incarnation must be precise. The terrorists? Where we want them. 1108, Sir Miles. Rossiter? He's one of their spies. That's how they kidnapped me. Have this refuse executed now. Right. Not whining. Shut your eyes. All over quick. Painless and mortal. You'll see. There. There. Easy as that. Look me in the eye. Come on, don't be cowardly. It's all unprofessional. Good. See, I hate working with amateurs. Fanny, we're on. All right then, George. It's me, hey? The governor. I'm gonna cut your throat to ribbons and go home to your girlfriend. Get into bed beside her wearing your face. Razors taped to my cock. I've been rehearsing this since I was 11 years old. Ooh, baby, the girl of your dreams is here to wake you up. I'll have you, you bleeding... Huh? This is to me. Hey, baby. Turn around, you weird piece of shit. I have something to show you. The Archons begin to descend into the material world, preparing to help the king manifest in the moon child. Ah, oh, no. What the fuck are they? That's them. They come in at a funny angle. I'm fucking shitin' it. You all right? I was ready for this the day I blew up my daddy's trailer. Kiss the girls and make them cry for me, Ringo. London, August 11th, 1999, 11.09. San Francisco, August 11th, 1999, 3.08. Takashi? I memorized the shape and it went back through my DNA. My grandfather remembered it when he was a young man. Look, a little facet of the time solid, Mr. Lang. Well, just in time. Chicago, August 11th, 1999, 5.09 a.m. Jim is the doctor, the master of the stethoscope, x-ray, skeleton, microbes, in the microscope. Down on the turf with the dead. Down on the turf with the dead. I make it 11.10. I'm shaking like hawking. Can't be helped. Time for the Queen Archon to make her appearance. London, August 11th. Now, it's all one now. It's done. I killed all those people because they didn't agree with me. Nobody hates Lara Croft when she shoots tigers and soldiers. Jackie, I feel like you do when you're on E and it's just love. The war is over. Everything in love with itself. Shining. In the kitchen, kissing ourselves inside out like gloves. It's still happening. I loved you too. You know I did. But you went mad. Even if it's all true, you've gone mad. Kitty. Don't do this. The king is dead, Jackie. Gideon? Starazuski! Starazuski! London, August 11th, 1999. 11-11. You do realize what you've done, don't you? You've delivered the boy safely into our hands. Our golden boy king, as intended, trained by our enemies to be the perfect vessel. All making sense now, what? I'm afraid you'll miss the climax. But I wanted you to know... You're stupid. Your life was a waste. And now? The eclipse lasted two minutes and twenty-three seconds. Or forever. Still not sure. You what? You, my dear boy, were selected long ago as the perfect host for the King Archon, as he condenses his macro structure into this world. His kingdom. Your kingdom. Why did you think we wanted you to join us all those years ago? If only we'd known. This failed excuse for a man has prepared you better than we ever could. Well done. Thank you for your efforts on our behalf. I want him castrated, lobotomized, and working for us as a cipher man in the drone tanks. Chop, chop. 
For a minute, I thought he was fucked. He could be such a wanker sometimes. I used to forget what he could actually do. This is a king fucking mob, man. They still talk about him. King Mob uses the razors hidden in his wig as a weapon against the guards. <laughs> Meanwhile, the archons of the outer church were arriving through the eclipse door to take back the world and turn everybody into slaves for lunch. Two minutes, twenty-three seconds. All the time in the world. The Invisible Kingdom, Part 3. The Moment of the Blitz. Wham! Roy Lichtenstein. Samaya, I don't understand. I mean... The Think about the boy being the vehicle for the Archon. <laughs> the day you attain the 333rd degree of anti-masonry, Pennington, is the day you will comprehend my work here. This pitiful whore is nothing more than a symbol of the age that passes. At the appointed hour, I slay the king. <laughs> Sir Miles! Dear God, I knew! I knew something was terribly wrong! You've challenged my authority for the last time, Pennington. I'm not Pennington! I'm Rosader! You keep doing this! Y you're ill, Sir Miles! Rosader, traitor, you're all the same. Poof. What are you all gawking at? They shot the creature full of Key 23 in an attempt to bind the Archon. They made it useless for our purpose. He helped them. He's always been one of them. Yours was a wasted effort. Poof. Nah! You won't be saying that in a few minutes. In fact, you'll be eating your corpse raw to provide your body with the energy its new occupant will require. <sighs> Damn. Key 23, the word drug is in me. Internal chaos, death, melt, gestate, elevate, perish, beyond, night, receive, astral, daisy, cold, fortune, control, invert, practice. <sighs> shit, shit. 11-11, precisely, totality. The door, my dear Helga, stands open to Universe B. The next few moments should provide a highly unusual start to the day. Orlando, darling. Did you honestly think I wouldn't have learned you after the last time? <laughs> Go back to Mikdan and wait the day of foremost, you vicious piece of shit. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I swore in love. Christ almighty, this is getting a bit out of hand. Governor? Oh, shit. It's one of them, isn't it? I'm not your governor, George. Not anymore. Flint was just a suit. John? What the fuck's happening? Who's in charge of it? It is you. John, I know you anywhere. What happened? Did they make you like them? Well, yes. The question is, who are they? Listen carefully, Fanny. In my right hand, magic mirror, condensed space-time. In my left, anti-mirror, perfect, each mutually opposed. But put them together and they generate holographic complexity using a simple binary iteration. What we found in Philadelphia wasn't the orgy of the insect men. It was a discarded time suit, lying crumpled and folded at angles you never see a human body from normally. You know me. I had to try it on. Have you come among us now? Are you ready to rule? I better warn you, it's not possessing me. It's the other way around. What did the King Archon, Saboth, the Foundation Stone, are you... Sir Miles, the time has come. I ate him. Oh, no, so crossy. Have I not done your work? Let me serve you and not Saboth. Regina Mundi. Diamond Baphomet, super dense star of chaos. The microscopic iron prison of it. The black grail, the tip that devours. The knight on my quest must unearth the foundation stone of his heart. I wasn't really listening. I went into the UFO. I have this dream sometimes, where it all just shrinks to a dot. Everything ever. All the stars and days. That's about it, guys. Yeah, that's a bit what it feels like at first. But that's just to squeeze out the juice, my dear Dane McGowan. I think you know what to do, old man. The age of Osiris and Christ is over. Things get more perfectly machine-like over that way into the outer church of the Archons of Order. But around the very next corner, an interesting thing happens. I should seal it with a sacrifice. Of course, the last sacrifice. As Judith began the age, so must I complete it. The king is dead. Here, in the interference, the machine has partially conquered the future, but it never quite succeeds. 
This is a source of endless frustration to the smooth functioning of the machine. Miles, look at me. The Queen Archon, the Antimat, goddess of untruth. My sons are murderers of women. Do you recognize the cup of blood? And here begins the infinite novelty, self-knowledge, eternal freedom, and ultimate dispersion of the Archons of Chaos. We are walking behind the walls of time in the world you know, at right angles to it, so that you may see yourself and it. I've been here before. You're here still. Prepare yourself. Initiation never ends. All it takes is the correct angle and you'll see what you have always been. Ego scaffolding necessary to your development must now be husked before it constricts your growth. Fear of death is only the signpost that ego has reached its limit. You are not even born yet. This is how a human process looks to us. The body, decades long, billion-eyed and billion-limbed. The worm cast that you leave in time. This is your complete body, not its section. From look at you are in all now. Fucking hell. Time is in what you grow in all now. Time is soil and for nourished larva and grown in. Hard to make understand. Not soon. Come in all now. Ready and be born to come home. Don't think of midwives. See? Now you can't stop thinking about midwives. What did I tell you? Try to remember. Good lord. Really are awfully talented, Helga. I was terrified. Did you see? Did you see time? Harold may be more clever. Rugby may make more row. But we'll row, row forever. Steady from stroke to bow. And nothing in life shall sever the chain that's round us now. Others will fill our places, dressed in the old light blue. We'll recollect our races, will to the flag be true. But we'll still swing together, and swear by the best of schools. But we'll still... <coughs> Don't worry, poor Sir Miles. You'll rise again. The bodies are disposed of in a mass grave, Jolly Roger among them. King Mob makes his way to the telephone booth. Well, oh, God help us, that was one for the diary. What a hideous, incredible day. Time's still a bit iffy, sir. Not really sure how I got here. Cheer up, George. Been saving this for today. Stole from Harrods in 1962. How about a toast to our friends? Yeah, why not, eh? Hand of Glory is back with Cell 23. The great work is all but done. Time to celebrate, huh? So what about your plans for these next few years, Mr. Six? The world's my oyster, Oscar. And you know what they say about oysters. I expect things are likely to become rather odd from here on in. So here's to absent friends, and the new adventures of Division X. Never, darling. Never again. Nah. It's alright, Fanny. Nobody died. Nobody ever dies. We just have to make sure the maggot gets turned into the fly. Let's just get on a plane, eh? Three more of us, we gotta sell. Wanna start recruiting? I was wrong, Jack. You are a little messiah, aren't you? And I'm an international freedom fighter and transvestite terrorist witch who will never retire from causing a scene. Two tickets for real, baby. You owe me a dance showdown. University College Hospital, London. Hello? Oh, I didn't expect you to be up and about already. You probably won't remember. You're asking for raw carrots and salt and vinegar crisps. I was the one who found you bleeding to death in that phone box. You were in a bit of a state. Do you remember? I should have died there. Don't be daft. I couldn't just walk past, could I? My husband was killed by a gunman. Five years ago now. I still miss him. I couldn't just walk past. God bless you, Audrey Murray. I hope you inherit the earth. You'd shag anything. That's a popular myth about me. That woman saved my life, and she didn't even know me. I feel like crying. But I'll do some vandalizing instead, shall I? I've decided someone else can have the name and everything that goes with it. So what about you? I'm gonna crawl out of the husk of that phone box. 
upper spot of ontological terror? Let's hear all this mad new shit you've come up with. The name's Gideon, by the way. Olga Tannen. The culture has become addicted to the chaos it thought it was inoculating itself against. We are becoming your role models, your heroes. Our lives are your movie. She a bleeding poetry. Let's go tell her on the mountain, Helga. Race you to the horizon. Seattle, May 5th, 2001. Constantly cut classes, you encourage others to do the same. It's quite a file. Who are you? And who's that pervert in the weird little classes who were here yesterday? You think I'm dumb? Your authority's on shaky ground. I refuse to learn just enough math and English to bullshit my way into a no-hope drone job. So tell me what's wrong with educating myself and training my own body and taking responsibility for my own life. I will if that's all you want. All those weird comics and stuff you read? What? How do you know what I read? What is this? It's written all over your frontal lobes, love. And guess what? It's all real. Are you trying to tell me you don't know what this means? Dear sir, are we there yet? What time is it? We're calling ourselves post nowist which means anything to get past a perpetual hyper-moment of old-world order surveillance spectacle culture. We shed names like duck shed water. I grew up with the Gnostic straight-edgers, anti-sex, anti-death. We imagined ourselves to be perfect simulations. Superheroes on a corrupt digital planet conjured in the mainframes of epic, monstrous AIs. The universe of program inside a Manichean murder machine. Tormented by individuality, cursed by a thousand years of ego. The end of history. Before the memeplex. Before the super context. Why well, they fucking talk nowadays? Like rocket scientists of a fuck all. I was 15 years old. Never got my fucking youth. Uh, not freezing so much now, Dane. Tell them low. Remember all that weird shot I could do when we were little? Time telepathy. Like being reincarnated as everything all at once. Dane, man. It took my fucking life. What's my fucking word when they ask me? Like you said in the story. Hear that noise? All fucking time now. Drum machine in the train is, man. No more pop stars, no more fucking DJs. Just kids dancing themselves deaf until dawn. Do you want to shut up about the demons then? Or do you want to watch the sun come up over the mercy like when we were little motherfuckers? Glitter Dameron. Reality check. Ugh, my meme is cycling. Five minutes of post-ironic drizzle. I'm self-blind. I'm oscillating between weird loner and terrified daughter of Dracula too far up a glass wall in the rain. Stop watching the other walls then. Keep your eyes on my ass. The abduction or satanic abuse scenarios? A perceptual misinterpretation of the emergence into awareness of a whole new onion layer of mass consciousness. The multiple minds. The MPDs or forerunners. Poor misunderstood mutants like the X-Men. They're gonna do it, aren't they? They're gonna kill Barbalith. Robocopters, Jack. Shite. You're supposed to be the edgy. My friend Jack grew up in the post-ironic when it was embarrassing to have any convictions, but beliefs were mandatory. Deep down, he still thinks techno cults as evil megacorps strangling our dreams by recuperating them into the spectacle. We didn't have memes when I was little. Personalities, we called them. The situation his diagnosis was trapped in the either-or millennium. There's no such thing as recuperation. Only feedback. Which is why you had war. You tried to hammer your enemies into shape. You wouldn't understand how you allowed them to define the boundaries of your self-sense. The walls are piezoactive quantum encrypted security systems. It's like the maze in Thousand Petal Lotus 2. No more revolutions. We refuse to even recognize the wheel. The Edith Panning memoir was a support when we did the juice of three lemons. The original was on a disc techno cult bought for a hundred bucks at an invitation-only auction after Mason died. Story goes. Might as well chisel the secret of the universe on the fucking moon. They did. Coca-Cola. I thought we were here to obscurely reduce this macro-capital sepulchre to find Talcum after stealing the secret that his weird new Invisibles game comes out tomorrow. Think you know everything, don't you? Talking like the fucking open university, because everybody else does. Up yours, granddad. I'll die fashionable. We are the Midwich Cuckoos. Jesse Mer, now I confused my watch, undo. Reload Ouroboros eggs. They haven't got a fucking outfit called the Edith Manning Memoir. What did you use on the computer? Voodoo warrants from the Church of the Crow Daddy in Chicago. They'll fast breed and eat the security system from inside out. When did you last enjoy the company of Magus, little sister? 
He's such a normal guy. Access to multiple self-images and potentials, a menu selection of faces, contradictory personas, the end of notions of territory and boundary. The very concept of the individual, like that of the bounded nation-state, was not designed to survive the last millennium and must be transcended, hence this emergence of the so-called memeplex, or multiple personality disorder as a lifestyle option. You tell me. The butterfly runs the quantum computer. It flaps its wings and techno cult earns $10 billion in Asia. We created Shea Fox, and we finance invisible TV, satellite piracy, and other subversive activities across all media. The fuck? I knew it. Well, I should bloody hope so. We didn't bring you up a moron. I let you in, by the way. Tell me you remember your fairy godmother? Come to plant a bomb, Jack? The couple I've been saving. The super context? It's... It's like seeing these old Magic Eye 3D pictures, except with everything. The world turns inside out. You identify with everything in the universe that is not self, and dissolve the existential alienation dilemma in unity. All is one, and several is none. You know Dasad Transsynthesis? My invisible initiation involved three years as a trainee accounts manager. I learned how to shovel numbers, go home and dream, get fat on tortillas and Oreos. Then, when I was ready, I found them again. Initiation? We used to hang upside down in a tide pool filled with hallucinogenic crabs in my day. Didn't we, Jack? The basic fractal generator is pretty simple. Yes, no, as above, so below. Liquid software is carrying magic mirror and anti-mirror traces. Lasts for a day and feels like eternity. All right, all right. Not buying it off you as a fucking Christmas present, man. See it go. All right. Extreme impact environmental immersion option. It's ragged at the edges, but you can play any of 300 characters, some more involving than others. It's a thriller, it's a romance, it's a tragedy, it's a porno, it's neo-modernist kitchen sink science fiction that you catch like a cold. What do people do when they're on camera? They act! That's why the world's turning into a science fiction movie. Surveillance makes us all into stars. The world is set and the cameras are everywhere, as Alistair Crowley wrote in Lever Al, Chapter 1, as confirmed by the Kabbalah. Every number is infinite. There is no difference. Terranet News, serving the global neuro highway from dawn to dawn. The abyss of hallucinations in a can, eh? How many doses for your money? You can play can five times. Most people need a long recovery, but you'll be in and out like platform shoes, Jack. Exit, Scion, save, file. Planetary alignment, magic matter blobs eating everything inside at Changi Airport, the return of the Mayan star demon. Or could we be in for a brain frazzling magnetic pole shift? Select 2012, an apocalypse for everyone on your menu for details. A couple of the kids attested can cure themselves of the invisibles in five minutes by the end. If you don't get it the first time, you have to keep running it. It's different every time. And playing it seems to strengthen the immune system, funnily enough. I'm next. This game? You're releasing it all over the world for Christmas? That's capitalism for you, Jack. No one wants to stop because everyone wants to own it. Hurry while stocks last. I use the enemy. Say hi to my friend. Alright, Robin. Your mom doesn't want to say my secret agent name. I saw a boy in New York. She's older, but she looks great. Does karate three times a week. She was asking for you. Stop needing to save the world, she said. Saving's what misers do. Is that profound, or does it just make no sense, man? Took me back, all that. We used to have a laugh, eh? Look at that. It's like at the pictures. Yeah. I also bloody vandalized Magoo. I net haptic porn sites offering ever more bizarre hands-on experiences to a generation raised on voodoo and cum shot teenage triple X gangbang Lolita chimps, but sex with a dust mite? Ew. Lars is doing the weather. Don't diss the dust mite, Tiffany. Gave me a hard on. Select weather on your menu. I. I have gift wrapped a moment for the timeless time to come. The thing that scares me most. If I finish the story, what happens to me? Does it go on without me? Or is it the other way around? Alphabet fish and spelling sharks in the deep neon fathoms of meaning. On sky in the deep therapy tanks in the basement of Berkeley. Carrie's in love with a straight edger boy. Says I'm sick behind the eyes but doesn't believe she's part of the story too. Am I sick? Try to remember. It's only a game. I saw the ads. I think I'm going mad, but it feels like the best thing ever happened to, 
two, two. If I ever have a baby, I'll call her Quimper. Happen to, to we. The Gnostic error is to hate the material world. The super context is already fully present in everything. The material world is a part of heaven we can touch. Made that gun myself in 2001. Eleven years I've spent meditating on it, waiting for Saturday. One shot. Crystal Police got nothing on me. You'll be there when the time suit goes off? Be careful and I'll see you when it comes back. Should go when Jack's done, time squeezing down at the edges. Reynard? The Fox? Nice and smooth. December 22nd, 2012. I'm there at the end of the world that was, and the beginning of birth into full understanding, fusion with the super context. I am part of nature. Every airplane, every power station is a result of nature's process. We never fell. We were never apart from the world. We lied to ourselves. But now we're being born, fully grown like insects, like Athena, the goddess of truth. Larval consciousness experiences the introduction of necessary inoculating agents from the supercontext as a form of invasion by hostile bacterial forces. The inoculation is conceptualized by the developing larva as an invasion of threatening not-self material, the confronting and integration of not-self being a necessary stage in the development of the maturing larva's self-awareness. Phylogeny recapitulates history. It was a time suit I was talking about, Billy Chang used the Hand of Glory to free the time suit. Oh, is that what it is? So the hand unsticks the suit, but Freddy panics and collapses time down into a point with it. And, of course, I can't look at his ridiculous face. Harlequin, what's the point if we're not to remember this? You said I couldn't see your face. I meant literally. My face is not visible to you in its entirety from here. I can only show you slices. My true face lies always in a direction you cannot turn or point to. I think it's still trying to be born. It's fingers. Edith, tell Robin to call on Buddha, Namu Amida Butsu, if she can hear you. Of course she can. She is me. Fuck. Fucking cursor. A man, it moves in time around it. Makes dead your hand look like a claw. What? 1997 is just through the... Wake up in San Francisco. You don't have to do this until you're ready for it. Christ. Self-hypnosis deluxe. Deep breaths. Look. Darling, I knew it. Promise you'll ignore my weight. Fanny? Jesus, is that you? Fanny, I'll never kill you, baby. I'm too fucking enormous to die. Darling, I ballooned overnight. I... I think Takashi is dead. Do you feel as though time's speeding up, darling? I mean, actually getting faster. And your initiation is about to begin. Are they like giant spiders? The aliens? I'm worried, Dane. Are they here? I can hear them talking like you said. They never shut up. That's them. The bits between everything come to life and showing themselves. Scare the shot out of you for a little bit if you're not ready for it. Something happened. I saw my whole life at once, and all of this, I always said you'd be here. My darling King Mob. The Star Demons. Out of time. Paint your nails, Fanny. Get yourself gorgeous for the end of the world as we know it. Reynard? Deep breaths. You're all right. We're complexifying into the super context, eh? And the super context has a sense of humor. And King of this Aeon. What? The one we just ended? You a dose of Logoplasm. Key 64, you evil shit. Welcome to the word. And a bullet in the right place is no substitute for the real thing. Pop. And the king of all tears withdraws in a rain of colored cubes, goes the story. The archons are clearly BPM-3 grop condensations. Inevitable signs that universal larval development is proceeding towards self-awareness and birth. The super context absorbs the king effortlessly welcoming his quaint ferocity, converting it to narrative. And this voice talking? Listen to this voice closely. Who is speaking? Whose voice is this speaking in your head and reminding you that freedom is free? I love you.
good luck. Oh no, what have I done? My name's... Oh, Jesus, what have I done to... Always loved you. Will always love you. Goodbye. Remember to breathe. You are only being born. Prepare for download. Remember, she says. Can't remember fuck all. Not like the life you've had, Dane. I had my fucking bollocks off at that hospital. Fifteen years old I was. Start again, Dane, eh? Start from the start, cause it's a lot I didn't. Ah, uh, fuck. Ah, uh, like fucking. Uh. Don't believe nothing you hear. Trust what you know. Remember, it's all just a mirror we made to see ourselves in. And when the archons come, and it all turns inside out with scary miracles, it's only all the things you left outside when you were building your little house called me, eh? P.S. I have written this essay as a suicide note because your education system is moronic and rooted in an 18th century production ethic, and by the time you find this and award me zero out of infinity, I will be dead. Baby, in a dream on sex, can't describe, we, uh... House on Fay Wings. Huh. Huh. It's all right. Deep breaths. She's one of us. They time suits. What are we become in all now? I say we in all now. I'm ready to play with the grown ups. Show me, babe. Is all now love? Ah. <sighs> Gaz. Man. Reynard and me would argue all the time in this little Indian restaurant they had in San Francisco. There's a picture of Bill Clinton on the wall. There's no difference between fate and free will. Here I am. Put here, come here. No difference. Same thing. Nothing ends, it isn't something else starting. So which side are you on? Do you know yet? Anyhow, I've said my bit, and it's your go now. So while you're thinking about it, Think about this. My mate Elfe had told me something when I was little and wanking about twenty times a day. We made gods and jailers because we felt small and ashamed and alone, he said. We let them try us and judge us, and like sheep to slaughter, we allowed ourselves to be sentenced. See now. Our sentence is up. So here's the deal with the higher dimension and the magic mirror entities. There's a chance they're real, or at least observable. Greatly simplified, Grant had an experience during a drug-enhanced magical ritual where he believed he was taken outside the universe, saw all of time and space as a single object, met these entities made of living information, the silver blobs, and they showed him how to build a world and how to play in one. This was the inspiration for the core cosmology of the series. Though there's no telling how much of it he would still say is real now, this was 20 years ago. Plenty of interviews and Anarchy for the Masses catalog his thought process at the time, though, if you want to know more. It's all very interesting. The Invisible was an act of magic in itself. It was a spell intended to create invisibles, to make the world a little bit stranger and more interesting. Certainly worked for the comics world. The rest of Vertigo's writers and artists stepped their game up to compete with this early breakout hit, and DC's Vertigo as a whole set the standard for mature readers' comics for quite a while before other major companies began to show serious interest in the market. I like to say that while Sandman has the better artistic credentials, The Invisibles has more heart, but that's just my opinion. I hope you've enjoyed my presentation, but if you did, I really can't recommend enough buying your own copy of the book and the companion volume, as there's always more to the story than what I can fit in an episode, even in an expanded format like this. But I hope I've made you a fan of Grant Morrison's The Invisibles.